You are now listening to the Someone's Favorite Productions Podcast Network. Welcome home, everybody, and welcome back to Mr. Nathaniel Thompson from Mondo Digital. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, thank you. Great to be back here again. It's been too long. Far too long, and uh, even better is since the last time we got to meet in person. We did, out here in sunny L.A. Well, too sunny L.A. at the moment. I was about to say too sunny. <laughs> that day was rough. <laughs> and that was already a long day before the tour that we took running through at the Hollywood one. <laughs> Uh, uh how's everything been for you lately very good very busy cranking out commentaries left and right and reviews and all that kind of fun stuff and trying to keep track of every like what 30 release announcement announcements that come out every single day now so yeah <laughs> yeah that's a great great point uh you know we'll talk about commentaries in just a minute i'm sure but um last time you were on here we didn't spend enough time talking about mondo digital and i think there's a lot of people that still don't understand how useful of a site it is. So when you go through and get a title to review, how much work are you putting into all of these reviews? Just a guesstimation on the average amount of time for one review. Well, it depends on how you define review, because I mean, something like the clone, you know, the end of the clones of Bruce Lee. I mean, that takes a week. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it depends on the movie. But yeah, I mean, we're talking several hours because you got to watch it, go through the extras. And I kind of like try to give you a sense of the history behind it. And if there's past releases, I do a lot of comparison grabs and sort of like, I don't really do like star ratings or like grade ratings on it because I kind of try right. to treat the movie by itself and sort of like say, describe it in a way that if, if it would appeal to you, then you'll realize it. So, you know, I think people read my reviews and decide if that movie's for them or if this is a good release. I, I think it should be pretty obvious, hopefully. Um, I know some people are just like, well, is it thumbs up or thumbs down? I'm like, it doesn't work like that. So. <laughs> With with Mondo Digital, you've been doing this how long now? We're going on since nineteen ninety eight. Six yeah. years, yeah. Good God. Yeah. So I... in four years, it's going to be thirty. Like I started when I was a little pup. I mean, it's crazy. Right. That's amazing. Um, we're going to be talking about surprising releases tonight, and I'm excited because this is first off such a subjective topic. There's so many reasons Very. you can have something be surprising, and I really wanted to highlight what Mondo Digital does because. You are, you know, uh, the historical aspect is something that not enough people embrace and run to. Um, gosh, what is the best way to ask this? Like, is there a title that's had so many home video releases that the history portion alone is overwhelming for you to cover other than like Evil Dead or Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yeah, actually, if you look at my reviews for like Phenomena or Opera, I mean, they're like books now. I mean, it's like yeah. it it goes all the way back to like pre-laser, the VHS and Laserdisc, but there have been so many and they're all different. I mean, it every time they put a new one out, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like it keeps getting longer and longer. <laughs> I haven't even done the Severn Opera yet because I'm waiting for the replacement, but I mean, it's, that review right. is probably going to be like the record holder. It's, I mean, it's, it'll probably take you like, you know, three hours just to read the review. <laughs> um, as far as surprising goes, uh, what is... What is exciting you about releases in 2024? Um, I mean, just all the stuff they're finding. I mean, it seems like almost every week there's something popping up where I'm, you know, things that are either lost or incomplete or, or just, you know, 
caught up in legal rights or whatever um do they keep untangling i mean there's just stuff popping up left and right where i'm like how did they do that like how is this right. coming out um uh, that seems like it's happening more and more lately uh which makes me very happy i mean there's still obviously some holy grail titles that uh, are still you know locked in a vault somewhere but now it's like it kind of gives me hope that just about anything could come out Except for my number one uh, choice that we'll talk about. That's that's never going to come out here, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, there has been, God, probably on that note, like seven or eight titles that people have been listing as number one most coveted title on their list for years. And they just keep moving up this year because we keep getting these announcements. Like Criterion alone has put out like four or five of them just this year. Yeah. And yet there are so many things that people are clamoring for. And of course, we're all dealing with this in the environment of streaming and the constant uh, back when we were on disc and we're like, well, we still are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, on that note, though, as far as streaming, there's still lots of great stuff happening there, including a recent Shutter show you were on. What, what did you get to appear on? Indeed, it's a show called Horror's Greatest. Uh, episode three has just gone up, uh, but it uh, they're dropping the first five episodes or, uh, this fall and there's going to be another five coming up early next year. I think that's public knowledge, I hope. Uh, and um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun to work on. Um, it's kind of like in, obviously I was in uh, one season of Della Ross History of Horror um, and uh, then the 101 Scariest Movie Moments of All Time is another Shutter show. But this one uh, is a lot of fun. They've kind of shaken it up, got some new faces on here. And uh, it's really cool. Just if you haven't seen it, but the, the the main title sequence alone is worth it. It's a it's a practical, uh, like claymation animated opening sequence. And the first time I saw it, I just died laughing. It's it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, really really fun show. Very very proud to be a part of. It. But yeah, it's on Shutter, dropping every week. There has been, uh, I, I don't want to call it a resurgence because it's still only like four. But there's been a, a great awakening of claymation this year in a few movies that have yeah. been so great, and I'm so excited to see fully physical versions of these happening it's i hope people keep embracing it including the number one movie at the worldwide box office right now that just opened last weekend has a great uh, claymation scene in it <laughs> exactly that's what i was referring to and funny enough that's the first announcement we're going to talk about tonight actually oh, great. <laughs> uh on that note um you obviously keep up with a lot of films uh in theater at home mm -hmm. reviews but the big thing commentaries uh as somebody that just started doing these myself a little <laughs> over a year ago how are you cranking out so many how much time are you putting into every commentary well again it depends on the movie uh like i was really i know you you covered this i think on on your last show the one before but i put a ton of work into the one i did with uh, troy for bloodline uh yeah. because that was one i never thought i would actually get to do it uh but that movie has fascinated me since i was a kid and i've just always been into the history and i've like dug into like i mean i've read every screenplay draft that exists everywhere i mean i know the, the history of this thing backwards and forwards so when that one came along and i was like oh i was born to do this one um so i put a ton into that like a lot of work um but, like i just did one last night with uh with howard Berger. that was a really fun one um, it wasn't like super research intensive but uh it was uh yeah it, it was a really fun one uh but that'll be announced very soon i think as well can but, yeah so wait. you know you know it, it depends but at least a few hours but you know a few days depends i mean these like us was a solo one so with that obvious or paradise so those take a long time but it's worth it well and that's that's the thing i mean even tony just commented it nathaniel and howard are beasts when it comes to commentaries <laughs> it seems like every single week there are i don't know three commentaries announced with your name on it and you start thinking and i'm like well i know he works too how is yeah. this possible how much are you sleeping every night well it's weird though because like sometimes they'll know i mean well okay so like in australia they announced the, the plansky box which had the commentary for the ninth gate but i did with troy but that was like a year and a half ago that we did right it. i mean <laughs> so i mean i don't think people know like sometimes they're sitting on the shelf for a long time you and i'm like is this ever coming out like yeah so you never know um so when they come out is necessarily even close to the order that they get done in there are, I mean, three of my first four commentaries, the films haven't been announced or released yet. They were recorded last summer. That stuff happens all the time. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bloodline is great. Cannot wait to be able to see that one and actually hold it. That's one that I feel like I've been hearing about for years um, and, and people speculating what's going on with it. And now that it's here, it doesn't seem possible, but I'm excited about that. I'm just the fact they put the TV version on there because that, oh, like, yeah, that is so essential. I'm really glad they cleared that up because that had to be on there. Well, and you obviously love a lot of the stuff just like all of us watching. Uh, have you had any recent pickups that you're excited about? Anything that you've got in recently? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what do I have on my shelf here? Uh, I'm looking over here. 
Uh, well, I finally got all those UK second run things like uh, Inside and Frontiers and uh, May. Uh, so I, I, kind of, I was slacking on those, so I finally grabbed all those. Uh, but I got from Beijing, the UHD. Just got obviously I got a bunch of UK stuff in the mail, as you can tell, because yeah. that's what I'm staring at right now. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot. So yeah, I'll be digging into all that stuff later this week when I'm not reviewing things. But uh, and uh, you know, just got a big box of partner label interim stuff to review. So I just did uh, actually one of my picks. I just reviewed, so I'm not going to say what it is, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of good stuff in there too. <laughs> um, I will say everybody needs to go check out mondo-digital.com. All of the reviews are up there. The newest ones, I believe, stay on the top of the main site, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, newest one, I, I believe at the moment is Second Runs Pharaoh from over in the UK. And Not anymore. No, no. I just did one. I posted one about an hour ago, which will tell you what one of my picks is because oh, I wanted, to, I I wanted to get I wanted to have it up before the show. So if you want a sneak peek, go look at the site. I see it. Uh, <laughs> oops, uh, did not mean to spoil that. Uh, yeah, this is this is so such a good site um, that I refer back to so often, and it's one of those things that because of that historical aspect, you can find out like which edition is better. Why is this edition here? What are we missing? And uh, I mean, we're covering some of that in the magazine I published. That there's certain films that you should hold on to certain releases because the 4K has no special features, but there was. Right hours and hours of special features on the dvd so hold on to it so yeah um stuff like that is why i love mono digital always have yeah and i mean and don't just rely on me i mean it's it's something you should know in general i mean i know people have been having headaches trying to sort out like pat you're in the billy the kid like yeah do not get rid of your dvds folks like you need <laughs> you need the criterion you need the dvds like they're you, you can't have the whole thing without because each one has different cuts and i mean yeah like the average consumer i mean it's it kind of gives you a headache trying to follow this stuff sometimes so but yep. yeah you got to pay attention don't get rid of your old discs uh you know unless you're absolutely sure right speaking of the uk uh i got an order of three uk items from the atomic movie store today uh, i got in the incendies 4k Ooh. that 101 put out which uh they are have you have you reviewed much from them uh on and off yeah and i've done a few tracks for them uh as well they are, I don't know, like hit and miss with quality on some of the discs. And uh, I hear Incendies is one of the hits, and that's why I waited to find out on that one. But God, there's been a couple that have just not been up to what I would want for that movie. And I still hope for something better. Um, this one was supposedly selling really well. And after waiting for some people that I trust on the reviews, had to pick up the Arrow Silent uh, Lambs 4K. And, yeah, I got mine too. <laughs> this thing is way chunkier than I expected. Interesting <laughs> that they're going with the uh, slip around the whole hard box thing. Um, but one that I've been excited about all this last year and this year, um, Radiance continues to impress people. And I had to get in the World Noir yeah. Volume 2 box sets. Uh, these are... <sighs> Uh, Fran is doing special things <laughs> for Radiance, and I, I'm i very excited because it seems like some of these titles would have fit very well because he was with Arrow under the Arrow Academy line, or mm -hmm. even under regular Arrow with some of the titles that they used to put out, but Arrow's kind of shifted into this mainstream focus, and now Fran's back to, to save the day, it feels like, and even we're going to talk about a bunch of 88 film stuff tonight that they've kind of filled in some of these niches that arrow would have done probably a good four or five years ago so i don't know oh, yeah. there's a lot of exciting stuff happening over in uh in the uk right now oh yeah well everywhere <laughs> it seems like between them australia germany it's like they're killing my wallet <laughs> <laughs> it's very very true <laughs> uh other than pickups what have you been watching recently anything exciting uh well uh i i saw the uh the movie that we're gonna the announcement we're gonna cover. I saw it in the theater, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's spoil that the first title we're talking about is Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. What'd you think about right. it? I really enjoyed it actually. I, I had heard sort of mixed things, so I, my expectations were just sort of like right in the middle. Yeah. Um I understand people's misgivings because if you look at it, if you're expecting like a coherent, like three act movie, you're not really gonna get that, but it's sort of Tim Burton. But just having a real full throttle Tim Burton movie just kind of made me just grin. I mean, I was just so happy because I've been I mean, everything like post Sweeney Todd have been kind of like, eh, eh. so, but this really felt like him sort of back in the saddle. Uh, but I just had a really great time with it. I mean, just the Willem Dafoe stuff alone just had me just howling. I mean, there's nice. some gags with him that are great. That half the audience, I don't think, a lot of people didn't even seem to catch some of the jokes, which is too bad. <laughs> but yeah, I was just giving like crazy uh, through a lot of it. And the music is great. Um, yeah, I, I just had a really fun time with it. I, uh, I caught up with one brand new one this last week. Um, I've got to see Jeremy Saulnier's Rebel Ridge that premiered over on yeah. Netflix. How'd you feel about that one? 
I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was an interesting. Well, I mean, I, it's not really spoiler to say that to do it like a sort of an action pack thriller with, that's non lethal, I guess. Which it, yeah. again, people compare it to First Blood because that's the same thing. Because you know, Rambo doesn't technically kill anybody in the course of that movie, and this kind of does the same thing. Right. Um, but yeah, I thought it was good. Um, it, it, it's it's kind of an interesting hybrid of like kind of a legal procedural with like bookended with action scenes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. Um, I. I, I thought the, the actors all the leads are really great um i was just talking about this with uh, bruce holchek the only thing i can't figure out is why it's called rebel ridge uh because they only actually go to that location for about half like a minute and it, has nothing, it has nothing to do with the plot so it's kind of like <laughs> i guess you're trying to make it like chinatown as a metaphor but it, i'm not sure what that metaphor is so <laughs> yeah i i've always loved jeremy solnier stuff i feel like his style fits with my taste a lot for some reason um i i thought the action in the first half was great the the conspiracy thriller side that hits right about the halfway point it really slows it down for a minute but at least it's interesting i won't yeah. like complain necessarily that we went from high voltage action to storming into a, a courthouse at night <laughs> in the middle yeah. of nowhere uh but yeah it, it worked well and again the acting was incredible i i really happy with a mostly no-name faces that you've seen before uh there's a couple that you'll probably recognize uh but that's that was it it was a lot of people that are just small-time character actors really killing it yeah and I, it, it actually kind of goes against the cliches in some ways i liked i mean like it, it, it assumes you've seen these movies because there's there's a again i'm not spoiling it but there's kind of a, a the character they called serpico who's like an informer yeah. And they kind of assume that you're going to expect something and you think you predict it. And they're like, oh, actually, and they kind of like reverse it on you. And I was like, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was special. Um, and then I also, I got a good chance to watch a lot of stuff with my kids this week. Um, we we don't tend to be able to see a ton of movies during the week, but uh, we went to a friend's house this last weekend who watches the show. What's going on, Ben? And uh, we projected on the side of his uh, like shed outside um, Muppets Take Manhattan for Aww. a 10 year old, a nine year old, and a seven year old, or an eight year old, and it crushed. They all <laughs> loved it. It was such a damn good time. It was the perfect temperature outside. Absolutely Aww. loved it. And I was so happy because we got in the car and my oldest went, We need to watch more Muppets. And I was like, Victory. <laughs> you got to do Muppet uh, Caper. You have to. It's uh it's on the list for soon. Uh and then we checked out um School of Rock. My kids have never seen that, and that's like a perfect movie for me. Literally beat for beat, just wonderful. And then finished it up the for this last week with Batman Returns. Haven't seen that in years. <laughs> and that is such a weird movie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, but man, my kids were like, This is a Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> probably not the right time of year to watch it though that is such a no movie. no but well if you're <laughs> yearning for the cold it's a fun one right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i gotta ask i remember i saw muppets take manhattan in the theater when i was a kid but like i remember like the muppet baby scene the flashback like just yep. brought the house down when i was like, I remember the whole theaters went nuts during that whole scene you could barely even hear the songs people were just like dying yeah so did that did that still work it did work uh my i had shown my kids muppet babies um on this is gonna sound ridiculous but on a really low quality bootleg disc like two years ago and all they know from that show like they barely even remember kermit being in it but they loved the theme song and mm -hmm. so we get to see it in the show and they're like muppet babies they remembered it all of a sudden it was so perfect uh i feel like they loved it i god i had a blast it was so much fun <laughs> uh all right let's get on to our announcements then uh we'll talk more about releases from this year and some other stuff going on afterwards we'll talk about some of nathaniel's commentaries as we go through of course because i'm sure there's about 14 being announced this week uh first up beetlejuice beetlejuice is getting a glow-in-the-dark 4k steelbook uh, i know this was confusing for some people because it looks like there's two slip covers this is a double-sided slip cover and this is just a weird looking 3D mock up here. So uh, mm -hmm. you're going to have Winona on one side and Michael Keaton on the other of this glow in the dark steel book. Um, but it seems like a lot of people are happy with the film. So I, I hope yep. people get this if they want it. And I see Bob gets on the packaging because he kind of steals the movie too. Absolutely had to, all over the inside of that. <laughs> uh then after that uh this kind of came out of nowhere i'm, I'm just gonna ask you if you know anything about this uh, october 1st d and d productions is giving us billy beaven silent comedian from 1920 to 1929 uh i i've never heard of these people supposedly it was a kickstarter title a couple years ago news to me but i'm intrigued 
Silent Shorts. Uh, they're doing a little box set. There are going to be, I believe, two different discs in this, and they've got some uh, bonus shorts in there. This is region free. You can pick this up on Amazon, and I'm sure a lot of the other places will have it, like uh, Orbit and Diabolic, as long as they're carrying it, which I think they will be. Yeah. Uh, 88 films <laughs> announced a ton of stuff in this last yeah. week, so we're gonna be we're gonna be covering them in like two big chunks. Uh, first, October 28th in the UK and October 22nd in North America, that includes Canada. They're giving us a Blu-ray of the Kung Fu Instructor from 1979. Uh, this is going to have a slipcover on it with uh, uh, four collector's art cards, and we've got a trailer, stills gallery, and not much else on it. But uh, this is a movie that I know a lot of people love, and I'm glad this is coming out. And the artwork is pretty dang great on this. Yeah, great cover, yeah. And yeah, is... I, I get all, all their all their all their martial arts releases are great. So yeah, I have total confidence in this one. Uh, it says artwork by Seventeenth and Oak. I don't know that I've ever heard of Seventeenth and Oak. I don't know. But good job. <laughs> yeah, very good job. Uh, next one is the kid from Quang Tung. This is coming on the same dates, October twenty eighth in the UK, twenty second in North America. It's a Blu ray. We've got a slip cover and art cards on this one as well. And again, very few special features. We got a trailer and a stills gallery. That's it. Uh, but it'll be region free since it's releasing in both places. And of course, this is a Shaw Brothers title. I know there's a bunch of people picking up all of those right now. And they there still are, have, and they still have only gone through like ten percent of the Shaw Brothers library. I was about so. to say there are so <laughs> many coming out. People are pouring hand and fist to make money to be able to buy all these, and we're barely even into the barrel to be able to get these. Like they've still barely done the crime movies, so we got a long way to go. <laughs> Uh, next one is Facets of Love from 1973. Same thing, October 28th, UK, 22nd in North America. This one will have a slipcover and art cards as well. This one is an HD transfer from the original Neg with the trailer and stills gallery, and that's it. Um, but art looks good on this one. I'm glad people will have this one. I'm uh, I'm kind of surprised they're not going all in for some of these special features. This one's Shaw Brothers as well, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we think with the Shaw stuff, they could go nuts with it. But, you know, at least they're coming out. That's very, very true. Uh, then, this is a pretty <laughs> big title. <laughs> November 25th, 88 Films is releasing, uh, this is UK only, a 4K and Blu-ray release of Eyeball from 1975. And uh, you uh, have the opportunity to buy this uh, 88 film site exclusive rigid slipcase with the original poster art, or you can buy this standard slipcover that will be available everywhere else. They're both pretty damn great. I I, I love the uh, the original on this one, but the new the new art they got is pretty decent. It is, and I'm on that one. So. You are on this one. So brand new 4K <laughs> remaster from the original Technoscope negative. Uh, this one is going to have a commentary by the three amigos, uh, Troy Howard, Nathaniel Thompson, and Eugenio Ercolani. We got a commentary by Kim Newman and David Flint. A commentary with the hysteria continues. Are all three of those brand new, too? Uh, Probably. I think, I think some of it was on the pre, on their previous Blu-ray, but yeah, a lot of the stuff is new. Uh, interview with Martin Actually, Richard. No, Troy, Troy did a solo one on the old one, so that's yeah, Jeez. so it's all getting updated. Three new commentaries for Eyeball. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, interview with Umberto Lenzi, visual essay by Mike Foster, uh, locations featurettes. I believe a couple of those were on the original release. But your commentary for this one, uh, what can we expect to hear about? Oh, we have a lot of fun with this one. I mean, this, this movie is just such a joy. I mean, this is one of the most fun jolly out there. I wouldn't say it's like the best technically. I mean, right. it's not deep red, but oh my God, it's so entertaining. Uh, we had a great time with this one. And I mean, it's kind of become a running joke because Troy and I have done like, I think more Umberto Lindsay commentaries than any other director that we've tackled for some reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah, pretty much anytime we tackle, we do an Umberto now. Uh, it's always just a, you know, a cause or celebration. But yeah, we really, really enjoy doing this one. I, I'm excited for this one. I don't think this has had... Well, hold on. Before I put my foot in my mouth, has this had a U.S. release on Blue? Never. No, it hasn't been out here since VHS. Wow. Do we know why, or is there... Apparently, they have not yet determined who owns it, uh, I, as far as I'm aware. I've never seen it pop up on any licensors list, I guess, because it was Joseph Brenner. It's kind of, like, fallen wow. into some hole. Um, like, it's, like, Autopsy and, like, Torsum and all that stuff. Like, those have all, you know, been cleared up. But, yeah, Eyeball's a mystery one in the U.S. for some reason. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, let's see. Chris is asking if this is missing the 80-minute doc from the old release. 
I don't see it listed here. I don't think it's on there. Interesting. So again, we mentioned this before. Hold on to the old release yeah, if you got it. Old, yeah, that's true. With a lot of eighty-eight and arrow stuff, it's like keep your old discs because yeah, they tend to like swap extras out like crazy. Makes it rough. Uh, another big one: the twenty-fifth of November, four K and Blu-ray in the UK is the Legend of Fong Sai Yuk collection. Uh, there is going to be these individual cover arts on both films. And then this is the outer box. Uh, a couple of Jet Li films. This is going to have a rigid slip case with new art by Kung Fu Bob. Very uh, specific style, as always, for him. Two single digipacks in there with a 40-page booklet with articles by James Oliver, Paul Bramall, and David East. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to have a commentary by Chris Pagiali and Frankie Balboa. Interview with Corey Yoon Kwai and an interview with the writer Jeff Lau. This looks like a pretty solid release. Um, the second film is going to have a common, excuse me, commentary as well. Uh, region free because it's 4K. I, I'm very, very excited about this. Jet Li's having a hell of a release year. No kidding, especially in the UK. They're going like UHD crazy with him. So, just great. <laughs> Bring it on. Um, these are both very good movies, says Brian. And then mm -hmm. uh, Eyeball is a rare lensy attempt at self conscious satire. Hilarious. It is definitely a satire. Most <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, this is great. Looks like a really solid release. Um, yeah, excited for this one. What is next? Uh <laughs> Via Vision in Australia is running a replacement program for the substitute collection. And uh the sad thing is there's been a couple uh replacement programs that we have missed covering over the last few months so i want to make sure that we got it we got two in this last week alone to cover uh but this one was really bad they they got sent an hd master that was full-on missing scenes it was uh i believe the tv cut and that hurts this film and this is a this is a box set that people were really excited for because again i don't think there's any hd releases of this anywhere else that are legal releases at least yeah it's so, only streaming yeah that's it very exciting release. Uh, if you are needing a replacement, they will be sending it out. You can email them and uh, just provide proof of purchase and your postal address. They think it'll be shipping in October. Um, this one, such an interesting choice for a slip on this. Uh, November 12th, Arbelos is releasing two duo from 1997. Uh, this is the poster art that people will probably recognize. Uh, this is going to have the limited edition slip case that will be die cut on the front there with that number two. Uh, if you buy it from their website with that slip, it'll come with this number two air freshener as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, Arbelos always does great work. Excited to see this. Uh, this is going to have a new video interview with the director. We've got uh, Sue's feature length student film from 1984. A silent short film from 1986. Uh, another short film commissioned by uh, the Jianju International Film Festival from 2002. Uh, short introductory film about the children meet cinema from 2019. Um, they just kind of put everything they could on here. And then we've got a new essay called Two to Tango by Jonathan Rosenbaum in a 16-page 16, 16 booklet. This is pretty damn cool. Okay. So is this only the second disc release that comes with an air freshener that I, I can think of? Ooh. There's got to be, I think Air 4444 did one. I can't remember. Because I, I know the Burt Reynolds Australian box had one. Yeah. This but might be remember. like number four or five. <laughs> it should happen more often. <laughs> Ronnie says, do you really want your car to smell like number two? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, yeah, that always happens. Paul says he picked up the substitute collection. And then the very next day, they announced the replacement disc. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, wonder if they will be doing some sort of black light art for the minimalist slip cover. It's possible. They did that for, uh, uh, chameleon street, which is again, really solid disc from Arblos. Um, Arblos, I, I'm sure you've watched quite a few of their discs over the years. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, pretty happy with their stuff? Any favorite? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Their, their track record is really good. Really solid. They, they do a lot of great extras and, uh, kind of just put as much as they possibly can because they know it'll probably be the last release for many of these films. Yeah. That's safe to say. Uh, another 88 films release, November 25th on Blu-ray in the UK, Black Cat 2 coming in one of their deluxe hard box releases. Uh, this is going to be one of their slim hard boxes, so it'll, it'll still be a rigid case, but it'll be uh, better on your shelf. Um, this is going to have an audio commentary by Frank Jang and Robin Shu, 
interview with Jade Lung on this interview with Robin Shu as well. Uh, we've got some uh, credits and a trailer in Cantonese and in English and a stills gallery. Uh, I know a lot of people were waiting on this because they did such a solid Black Cat release. And uh, I just found out this week that the, I didn't even know this was the case, but there's a Black Cat 3 and Black Cat 4. Did you know about that? I, I know they exist. I've not seen them. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't think they've ever had HD releases. So I'm curious if there's uh, any any indication those might be coming someday. Yeah, from what I understand, they're not on the same caliber as the first two, but those are definitely. No, I think they're in name only. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, moving right along, Muppets Ooh. joke. Uh, October 29th, <laughs> Kino is releasing Deadly Circuit from 1983. This is going to have a new audio commentary with uh, Daniel Kramer. He just uh, mentioned that he did this one and very excited about this. The stars Isabella Johnny. I have never seen this movie and it seems like you're excited about this. Can you tell us I about it? This Circuit? is a cool movie. I'm really glad this is happening. Uh, this was out on Blu-ray in France for like a minute and then it was out of print before I could even get it. And I was so mad that I missed it. So <laughs> and I'm glad I waited. Uh, yeah, this is a really great one. This was actually um, remade very controversially in the U.S. as I Have the Beholder with Ashley Judd and Ewan McGregor. Um, this is a much more coherent film uh than the way that one turned out <laughs> uh, now this is a very very cool one uh i love this movie funny thing is i i knew it was coming because i i actually bumped into daniel uh we crossed paths over at the academy library over in beverly hills and he was coming to pull research on this and i was pulling it on the one that i just did with howard last night so uh <laughs> a while back so um yeah just funny timing so yeah as soon as he said he was working on this i was very very happy uh this is a really really great one Speaking of Daniel, uh, you're interviewed in his new doc, right? I am, yes. Uh, yeah, the Sylvia Nor Norizano uh, doc that's going to be coming out on a release uh, from Imprint. Or, yeah. no, Indicator. Sorry, Indicator. Sorry. Or Imprint. Oh, oh Imprint, yeah. It's Imprint. <laughs> yeah, it's Imprint. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, I saw the title card at the beginning of the doc. It's definitely Imprint. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was right um, the first time and I second guessed myself. I was trying to remember the logo. <laughs> I... Uh, I'm very excited for people to see it. The documentary is so well put together and uh, God, he is passionate as hell about it. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of, we're going to be talking to Daniel soon about the documentary. We'll be uh, discussing that with everybody. Excellent. Uh, next, Kino Lorber putting out Play It Again, Sam from 1972. Now, I have never been a Woody Allen person. Uh, this is coming with a 4K scan of the OCN. How do you feel uh, either about Woody Allen as a whole or about this film? Well, this isn't really a Woody Allen movie, so that's got that right, going for it. Right. He's, only, he's only in it. It's kind of like The Front. It's one that he stars in, but he, it's a Herbert Ross movie. So um, I actually love this one. Uh, this is kind of a movie for Casablanca fans, obviously, as you can tell from the title. But I saw this one when I was a kid. I've always had a soft spot for it. This is one of the, one of the silly ones. Uh, but this one's a lot of fun. If you don't like Woody Allen, you're probably not going to enjoy this because it's, you know, it's him riffing on bogey. So, uh, but yeah, I really like it. And it's, yeah, again, it's very funny. They used to show this on TV all the time back in the 80s. And yeah, it was just kind of like one of those, like, you know, warm blanket movies you just kind of throw on. Yeah, I, I really like this one. Gotta love those warm blanket movies. Uh, next one is The Killer Whale. Orca, The Killer Whale, coming on 4K from Kino Soon. Uh, this was just recently released by Studio Canal in the UK on 4K. So you can bet it's likely the exact same 4K transfer. Uh, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Um, they, I don't know if they're going to port over all the extras from the Studio Canal. They've been kind of picky and choosy about those lately. Um, but they'll likely record another new commentary for it. That's just what they've been doing for every release. Uh, so, yeah, coming soon. And since Studio Canal's done with it, I either they probably put this out soon or they wait until, like, next May to capitalize on the summer rush. Yeah, we'll see. Although, if they don't have the league gamut track on there, that would be a real shame. But, you know. He's obviously the guy that you would go to for this one, and that's obviously yeah. never, not going to happen again. So, yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, November 5th, Paramount is releasing White Christmas on 4K. This is the 1954 uh, Bing Crosby film. And one that uh, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they, they didn't go a little more all out on. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about 54's White Christmas? Um. I like the movie. It is not much of a Christmas movie, though. Like, I know people right. keep recommending it. They, like, they, like, they always screen it in L.A. here on Christmas time. And I'm like, you really should only get them, like, five minutes of Christmas in the movie, right? I mean, it's really not a whole lot here. Um, it, but it's it's a beautiful film. I mean, it was shot in Best Division. Um, they, the 4K restoration has been up on, um, like, I have, a, I have Clydescape here, so you can watch. You, you can see the master up that they've had for a little while. Um, it looks great. Uh, it looks spectacular. Anything Best Division scanned in 4K looks just ridiculously good. Um, and this that's the case as well. So they, this will look amazing. Um, again, they could have gone heavier on the extras, but, you know, 
Hey, I'm, I'm glad they're finally putting it out. Dustin. Yeah, Heat Wave with a snow cameo. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great title. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, next up, this one's pretty cool. October 28th, Fabulous Films over in the UK is releasing the Paddington Bear, the complete collection. Uh, this is going to be coming on Blu ray, and they're doing a really like cute little uh, pop up version as well. Um, the other standard version is here, and it's like, eight dollars cheaper but if you really want to go all in you can get uh this little pop-up cover on it um they're gonna have a couple restored features on here and um, this is going to include uh let's see barry leith the film fair animator feature on it as well um i remember watching some of these when i was younger i, I always liked these yeah that's really cool packaging too uh they, they went all in on the animation style i, I love when companies yeah, do something like that's that. really neat uh, speaking oh. of the UK, Vertigo releasing over there is putting The Beast from 2023 out on Blu-ray on October 21st. Uh, no extras on this as far as I can tell, but I have heard that this one is a pretty decent movie. Did you get a chance to see this one? I, I did. It's actually it's streaming on the Criterion channel right now. Uh, it went up about Ooh. maybe a month ago, so I watched it there. Um, I liked it. It's it's a pretty cool... It's, it's grim, uh, but it's a cool little movie. Um, so I assume Criterion is going to be putting out a blu-ray of it at some point at this probably safe uh, to take that with some extras so yeah might want to wait if you're if you're planning on importing could be on uh their janice contemporaries line I guess. yeah pro- i would i would almost bet on it yeah because i think they flat out own it over here yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> i totally forgot this was this week uh november 19th <laughs> paramount is also releasing the zazz collection on 4k with airplane top secret and the naked gun uh, now this is this is cool, but I've had a lot of people commenting. Uh, I would only buy this if it had both of the Naked Gun sequels and the Airplane sequel on 4K. First off, sure, we'd all love that. But second, it wouldn't be Zaz the collection because it wasn't Zaz working on all of those. So I get it, uh, but they they went all in to get these three on here. Uh, I'm glad we're going to get this release. Uh, a couple of these have not been on on 4K yet, so this is a big deal. Um, this is exciting. Wh- which one of these three is your favorite? Oh, well, I got to go with Airplane because, I mean, it's one of the funniest movies ever made, but I love the other two. But, um, but folks, I mean, if you know the history of Zaz, if they tried to put Airplane 2 on here, like, they would go over and they would burn the studio down. That's not going to happen because they were pissed off that, that movie even got made. So, uh, Never yeah, ain't, ain't going to happen. Um, but, I mean, the big news here, obviously, is getting top secret in 4K because um, yeah. the Airplane 4K Master has been out for a while. Again, streaming, I mean, obviously, it would look better on UHD, fingers crossed, but... Um, but yeah, finally get doing top secret. That's, that's really cool. Cause that just has some brilliantly funny stuff and I'm so glad they're doing it. And that, and they tried to make the Blu-ray look as good as they could with that old master, but it was pretty limited. So this was really, really much needed. Have you seen the 4k master? Does it look better? Do you, Not for top secret. Really? I don't know. I know it's oh, a new yeah. game, which it just needed so desperately because that Blu-ray, they, was, they took the old HD master it they used rough. for the Australian Blu-ray and they tried to like spip it up and it was like, here, come on guys, you can do better than this. And they did. So well, and it's Paramount. Paramount's kind of been hit or miss over the last couple of years. I, I'm really hoping that this is knocked out of the park. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm still like terrified of to catch a thief. What that's going to be? But we'll see. <laughs> I mean, it's supposedly same scan, new restoration. So I don't know what that means. I <laughs> <Time> will tell. <laughs> uh, next up, um, Cohen Media Group, uh, who is like a, a partner label or distribution partner of Kino Lorber. Uh, mm-hmm. they are putting out Merchant Ivory, and I see that uh, this is flat out missing the date. It's the same date as this next one, which is also missing the date. Uh, whoops. Um, let me pull that up while we talk about this. But this is a documentary about uh, Merchant Ivory, and yep. this is going to have interviews with Emma Thompson, Helena Bonham Carter, Hugh Grant, Vanessa Redgrave, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. We got some deleted scenes. We've got an introduction from the New York Indian Film Festival. Uh, another uh conversation from a film festival this this is pretty cool I, i'm really excited to see this yeah i want to see this too yeah they were kind of part of my childhood growing up so yeah i'm really looking forward to this well and cohen media group does not get enough attention they put out some really great stuff yeah they do they really do and yeah they've they, it's they sort of had like a lull with their merchant ivory stuff so i'm glad they're getting back to it i guess because they were waiting on with the doc but you know they kind of went guns blazing there for a little while and then got really quiet so yeah i guess now they're back at it again and this one is coming out on November 12th. That's the date. I finally was able to find it. <laughs> uh, 
This next one is also November 12th. This is Roseland from 1977, also Cohen Media Group. Uh, this is going to come uh, with conversations from the quad. James Ivory and Larry Kardish discuss the making of this. Um, Christopher Walken, Teresa Wright, Geraldine Chaplin, uh, Lou Jacoby. I have never seen this, but this sounds fantastic. Yeah, I've only seen this on like really crappy VHS, so I'm really curious to see how this, this is going to play. Very, very interested to see it. Uh, Christopher Walken looking mighty young on the cover of this. Yeah, very. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, uh, yeah, really, really, really young. Oh, oh yeah. Trent this this was what, 77? Jeez. Yeah, this is like pre Deer Hunter. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Uh, next up, Keenan Lorber, November 12th, Triumph of the Spirit with Willem Dafoe and Edward James Olmos from 1989. Um, hell of a slipcover on this. They went with a nice evocative scene on this. Um, this yeah. is a powerfully moving boxing drama that takes place during World War II at the Auschwitz internment camp. Willem Dafoe stars as Salomo Aruch interned at the death camp with his family and friends, which include Edward James Olmos and Robert Loggia. He's forced to fight his fellow inmates to amuse the guards. The loser is sent to the gas chamber. Solomon's prowess in the ring is both his salvation and his nightmare as his hollow victories condemn others to death. Still, he fights on, hoping he might somehow save his father, his friends, perhaps even his soul. Uh, audio commentary on this one with uh, Manuela Lazic. And this, to me, seems like a must. Yeah, this is a cool movie. Again, I haven't seen this since VHS, like back in the day. But yeah, this is a cool one. Actually, I always hated the title, though. It's so generic, like, but it's it's a much cooler movie than you would think from the title. That's just awful. Well, and with the synopsis, you would think it would be a little more emotional of a title, I guess. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, next up, Arabesque, which uh, came out on Blu-ray from Kino about three, three and a half years ago. Getting yep. a 4K from Kino. This is a brand new UHD SDR master from Universal 4K scan of the OCN. Uh, everything else on here, I believe, is the original, including a commentary with Nathaniel Thompson and Howard S. Berger and Steve Mitchell. Yes, indeed. Uh, that was a fun one to do. And yeah, I'm, my God, the Blu-ray alone was psychedelic enough. I can't imagine how this is going to look in 4K. Uh, it might be a blessing this doesn't have HDR, actually, because it might like blow your projector up. Um, but yeah, this movie is is very visually overwhelming. If you haven't seen it before, like Stanley Donnan just goes nuts with like the crazy lenses and colored lighting and everything. It's uh, Yeah, this one's a treat. I have to imagine you probably uh, recorded that commentary a good four, four and a half years ago at this point. At least, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a lot of fun with it. I remember that we enjoyed doing that one. <laughs> it was right here at my house where I'm recording this. Nice. <laughs> uh, Raro hmm. is putting out a couple of films that they've released through Radiance in the UK, and they are now releasing it with Kino here in the US, including this November 5th release of The Italian Connection, uh, a lot of people commented that this was uh, something that was part of a collection before, like we all didn't know that. Uh, this is a brand new 4K remaster that got way better reviews than the old release of this because the box set release they did of the DeLeo stuff was very not great scans of the films. Uh, it was yeah. before Raro was able to get uh, really in there with some some better equipment. Uh, this one also has an audio commentary with Sam Deegan on it and an archival hey. documentary, Roots of the Mafia. This looks like a hell of a great release. Yeah, it does. And yeah, boy, this one needed a new scan really badly. So yeah. Glad and that UK great. one has, has done very well for people. So yep. excited to see this. Uh, speaking of replacement programs a little while ago, Phil Movement has announced that Greenfish from their Poetry of Li Chang Dong uh, box set that they just did, there was a, a master problem. So if you watched your disc, the, your disc probably looked fine, but it was just an older master. They, they were supposed to have released a newer HD master and they didn't like what was on the disc. So they're going to be sending you a brand new one. If you ordered this through Vinegar Syndrome, it will just come with your next package. Next up is the other one from Raro, The Boss, coming out on Blue on November 12th. This is another new 4K restoration from the OCN, another audio commentary by Sam Deegan, and another archival documentary, Mafia Stories, uh, this one also with Henry Silva. And again, uh, the Kino Lorber sales are on release day, whatever. Feels like this absolutely deserves a pickup. 100%. <laughs> italian chevy chase <laughs> definitely looks like i'm on the cover <laughs> which one <laughs> kind of... yes at different stages in life <laughs> yeah that's like community chevy chase on the right 
Oh, man. Uh, this mm. is the announcement that rocked the world earlier this week. November 4th, Studio Canal is releasing The Third Man on 4K as part of their Vintage Classics line. A 4K collector's edition of this that looks, first off, beautiful, but second off, massive. Like, this is something that will take up half of a shelf by itself. Um, <laughs> let's Let's go through some of this. First off, pop-up rigid box packaging and when you open it the third man theme plays <laughs> that's insane uh 64 page booklet with brand new essays fully annotated shooting script is in this four art cards a poster of the brand new artwork um there is a uh, excerpt from a behp audio interview filmmakers influence on the third man restoring the third man audio commentary joseph cotton's alternate opening bunch of old uh, archival extras and um yeah lots of stuff coming i'm i'm assuming this is going to look absolutely stunning in 4k but holy god the size of this project i'm surprised it doesn't actually open up and have like a zither inside that you can actually play like the opening credits you know that would be great it may be the next time when they can do the 8k <laughs> <laughs> um I, as somebody that loves these releases how do you feel about these giant freaking box sets for one film uh i appreciate the effort if it's too big it kind of has to go into storage somewhere but um yeah i mean there's i mean uh, this is fine actually i mean i only get peeved when it's something like the criterion godzilla thing where it's just a shape right. that absolutely will not fit anywhere like there's no shelf yeah the that will accommodate this thing um so at least they're considerate making it kind of sort of over slightly over disc size so you know at least you can do it's it's huge but you know it's not too unwieldy i think at least but, like on the shelf yeah it's it's weird when you think about how far we've come with this movie though. Like, do you remember way back when Criterion did the very first Blu-ray of the Third Man? Like, how rough that thing looked. Yep. I mean, because that was like in their very first batch when like they hadn't really gotten the compression thing down, but like, like that and like Last Metro and all those. I mean, those look really bad. Um, but they were like so super compressed in Third Man. Like it was a grainy scan anyway. But the thing was just like <laughs> super chunky. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, and then but yeah, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So I can't wait to see it in 4K. It's gonna be great. Uh, Reggie is saying, I'm afraid to hear the price. If you order it from Amazon UK and you're in the US, it's about $65 shipped. Uh, if you order it over in the UK, it's, oh gosh, I think it was like 47 pounds, something like that. And then uh, if you order it from a US retailer, your Atomic Diabolic Orbit, uh, they are priced at $72 at the moment, which is... That's a lot for one film. Uh, it's not never-ending story from Australia a lot, but it's a lot for one film, that's for sure. It's still cheaper than Aliens Expanded on Blu-ray. That is <laughs> true. It's also... It, this crazy edition is cheaper than the out-of-print Criterion Blu-ray. So That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, next up, brand new exciting release from Fun City Editions. Uh, we don't have a release date on this yet, but they are putting out a two-disc Blu-ray of something that they are calling Welcome to Fun City. Um, this is going to have a strictly limited slipcover that is only on their website, uh, and it's a collection of about 200 theatrical trailers, TV spots, and radio spots sourced entirely from fresh scans of original film and audio materials, it's a first-of-its-kind document of New York as it appeared on film during the Fun City era. Each trailer and TV spot is accompanied by a unique, optional audio commentary track from a varied roster of esteemed film journalists, programmers, academics, historians, podcasters, and everybody, including people uh, like Bill Ackerman, who's announced that he's a part of this, and our friend Chris O'Neill is also a part of this. Uh, are you on any of these? I, I guess I, I am not. Uh, I can't wait too bad. I'm, yeah, I'm, glad is... they, I'm glad they're merciful and, and like let people only do a few trailers a piece because yeah, Howard and I did a commentary for one of those garage house action trailer comps. It was like oh, two and a half hours, and my god, my brain hurt so bad by the time it was over. I mean, I <laughs> I don't not do that again. So yeah, thank you, Fun City, for being merciful with the commentators. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine trying to write notes for uh, you know 75 trailers back to back to back to back and do a comment and trying to jam it into like 90 seconds you're just like right ah, ah, <laughs> jesus christ like <laughs> describing specific trailer shots yeah that's that's awful yeah uh let's see stan says i would suggest a film with a similar goal los angeles plays itself which is great every cinephile should see it for sure great doc absolutely uh, very curious to see what hard-to-find movies show up on Welcome to Fun City, myself included. 
Um, well, I, I, I think it's pretty safe to say Night of the Juggler is going to be on there. I on the cover. <laughs> would be weird if it wasn't. Uh, it better be. says, I want it, but it's $50 after shipping and tax. Now, what's interesting, this is... Uh, a, a lot of people are complaining about this. Two Blu-rays, and it's uh, they're, they're just calling it a trailer comp and saying, but it's $40. How come? Again, fresh scans of 200 trailers tv spots and radio spots first off this could not have been cheap to license everything uh but second off just the restoration work for 200 of these is astounding yeah it, and the, the 40 dollars doesn't value. seem crazy yeah it's worth it <laughs> Um, I have a feeling, uh, he didn't introduce himself, but I have a feeling this is our friend, Mr. Howard S. Berger, says the trailer comp was over three hours for Garage House. That hurts even more. Yeah, it's been a few years since that came out. I remember it was really long. I mean, it took all night to record that thing. Uh, Yes, what an ambitious idea. Completely agree. Uh, Oh, look at that. LA Plays Itself is on sale on Grindhouse with their brand new sale that they just launched. Nice. Uh, Chris says, got to say, I get why, but physical media is crazy expensive now and hard to keep up with. I mean, yes, but you also don't have to buy everything. Uh, Brian says, I agree. Very expensive for trailers. Don't know why we care about trailers. Don't get it. Well, there's a lot of history there. And they're really fun. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, next up, we got some Clint Eastwood 4K announcements. Kino doing the Iger sanction from 1975 on 4K on November 5th. Uh, we got a new audio commentary by Justin Humphreys on here. Also includes the uh, archival commentary with Nick Pinkerton. And uh, this should look pretty pretty great on 4K. That should look amazing. Especially with Dolby Vision. Yeah. Uh, next one is play Misty for me, which is the one I'm most excited for out of all these again, Dolby vision master new commentary by Alan Spencer, who is a screenwriter. And, uh, yeah, again, this looks like a really great release. Oh yeah. Uh, love that they are putting all these out on the same day so that everybody can have their wallets hurt all at once. Uh, <laughs> two mules for sister Sarah is the third one. Yeah. We just talked about how expensive this is by three on day one. Uh, <laughs> Again, November 5th, 4K, uh, brand new Dolby Vision Master. This one also has a new audio commentary by Justin Humphreys, and it includes a bunch of archival extras, and it's got the Blu-ray in there as well. This is a pretty astounding stack of releases for Eastwood fans. And the fact that we're getting Two Mills for Sister Sarah and Paint the Wagon on UHD in the same year just cracks me up, because they might be the two weirdest Clint Eastwood movies. So, yeah, it seems kind of appropriate, I guess. Uh, Howard asking, does it have my features on there? Yes, video essay by Howard S. Berger. Um, Played again, look back at Play Misty documentary. Uh, is that all that you had on there? It's got the old Tim Lucas commentary as well. Uh, there's a good question. Adam is saying, oh, I went all the way back to Iger Sanction, didn't I? Look at that. Um, Somebody's saying, uh, Adam saying, Play Misty is his best film. What do you think about that statement there, Nate? Ooh, uh, it's one of my favorites. It's a lot of fun. I'm not necessarily sure I'd say it's the best, but it's it's up, it's up there. It's really high up. Now he's saying other than Unforgiven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a Dark Horse figure, but I really love High Plains Drifter a lot. Ooh, so not one you hear often for a favorite. No, it isn't. But I really love that movie to, to pieces. It's hard to pick one. It, it I don't know. It's toughy. Interesting. Uh, then this was pretty damn cool. Uh, yeah. November 12th, they're doing a Blu-ray release of the Martian Chronicles again. Um, this is the 2018 HD master that they had before. However, they're adding audio commentaries for all of the, uh, episodes. Um, all of them have Amanda Reyes on it. The first one also has Heath Holland from over on Serial at Midnight. The second one has Justin Kurzweil. The third one has Daniel Budnick. Um, there's also an archival, uh, interview with James Faulkner on here. And uh, Amanda revealed today that there's some other miniseries coming from Kino here soon. So that's pretty exciting, Ooh. too. Can't wait. Um, I've never seen this one, and I, I'm very, very curious to uh, to check this out. No, this is a great one. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure why, but this one really spooked me out a lot as a kid. It's not really all that scary, but yeah, it just really, really kind of like got, got under my skin for some reason. But yeah, this is a really cool one. Nice. Um, this is cool. November 19th, yeah. The Visitors from 1972 is coming to Blu-ray. Uh, this one has been semi-difficult to see. It was on like a double feature DVD, I think, mm -hmm. for a while. And that's been out of print for 
like a generation or something. And then yeah. there was a there was a VHS that was also like kind of hard to come by. Uh, this one's going to have an audio commentary by Kat Ellinger and Martin Contario, who she just married. Uh, yes. Very curious to see how that turns out. She seemed very excited to be a part of this. Um, great release. I like the slipcover on this. The art looks really good. Uh, yeah, excited to see this one. I'm excited to see it looking good because every home video version of this poor just looked like crap. It was all like dingy old prints and just looked really bad. So yeah, I'm, I'm fingers crossed this is going to look good. Oh, perfect world. Yeah, good, good choice. Uh, yeah, can't wait for this one. Uh, next up is Harrison's Flowers from 2000 coming on blue from Kino on November 19th. Annie McDowell, Elias Cotius, and Brendan Gleason and Adrian Brody in this one. We get an audio commentary by Manuela Lazik. And uh, this is a huge cast. And somehow, I don't think I've ever heard of this film at all. <laughs> I, I actually saw this, I think, on VHS, maybe. But I remember nothing about it at all. Positive or negative. It's a, it's a very interesting poster art on this. I, I want to know what exactly that is. <laughs> <laughs> Going to our next one. Uh, Magnolia is releasing Dance First. This is a Samuel Beckett film uh, starring Gabriel Byrne. Um, and I've heard great things about this. This is from this year. Did you get a chance to see this one too? I haven't seen it. Darn. Uh, next up is Ooh. The Bat from 1926. Undercrank, putting this out. Uh, this is for, for everybody that is not excited about this next part. Had to warn you. Uh, mod Blu-ray will be made on demand. Will not be pressed. Coming on October 15th. Uh, this is a brand new 2K restoration they did as part of a Kickstarter thing. If you were on the Kickstarter, you would have gotten a pressed Blu-ray. Uh, this is going to be digital restoration by Undercrank from 35 millimeter film elements. Uh, was preserved by UCLA Film and Television Archive. Has a new score, of course, by Ben Modell. Uh, and includes the 1926 comedy two-reeler, a fraternity mix-up, and a short documentary in the life and career of director Roland West. Um... This looks like it's going to be a great release. The The film sounds fun as hell. Well, in good timing, because VCI just put the Bat Whispers out is that double disc Blu-ray, which is the sound version, which is amazing. If you haven't seen that, it's the fact it was made as early as it was is ridiculous because it's just visually staggering, yep. the invention in it. Um, but this is pretty much the same movie, but silent. Um, and they actually have a com like a side-by-side -side comparison with the silent one. So thank God they're putting us out on Blu-ray because, yeah, after the Bat Whispers, I was like, come on, where's the Bat? And here it is. <laughs> so, hey. I love what Ben Modell is doing over with Undercrank. They always do great stuff. Uh, <laughs> what a weird transition. <laughs> from the bat to feed. My, my neck hurts uh, now from that one. Like <laughs> <laughs> Unearthed is releasing Feed from 2006. This is coming. I, I think this is the first 2025 announcement we've had. January 21st. And uh, just so that you know what this one is about. Uh, it says, intensely grotesque and shocking as hell, Feed is a heavyweight thrill ride through the depths of depravity. A veteran of cyber porn investigations, Australian cop Philip Jackson is no stranger to the dangerous side of sexual fetishes. He may have found a sickest case yet when he discovers a sinister side to an American website devoted to fat admiring men and obese women called Feeders and Gainers. Could the man behind it all be force feeding missing women to death? It's tense, dark, and deeply disturbing. And Brett Leonard, who is the director behind The Lawnmower Man, Virtuosity, and Man Thing, takes the crime thriller genre to a twisted, gut wrenching new level. Uh, we get a commentary by the director on this some deleted scenes with commentary, an alternate mm -hmm. ending with commentary, a uh, final day interview with the director, um, some interviews with some of the cast and crew, and then <laughs> Feed in Philadelphia, the North American featurette. Not sure what that is, and a behind the scenes footage featurette. This sounds intense. I'm just curious. Is is from the director of Man Thing a selling point? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, he did Hideaway. Isn't that a bigger movie than <laughs> yeah, I, whatever? Oh my god! I, I I assume fans of Feed will probably gravitate more towards Man Thing than Hideaway. Maybe. I guess. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, just struck me as curious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even Virtuosity is an odd one, even the list. Anyways. Uh, Radiance Ooh. had a hell of a lineup to announce this time. So December 16th on Blu-ray in the UK only, uh, the man from Majorca, 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 however they're pronouncing this one from 1984, 
This is a uh, Bo Weiderberg film, and uh, God, I love the art on all of the Radiance releases, but this is just great. Um, this is essentially a uh, follow-up to the other Bo Weiderberg film that they did. It's uh, very much feels like it's in the same world, supposedly, um, though the story is clearly different. Um, that other film is The Man on the Roof. Uh, this yeah. is going to have on-set reporting, including behind-the-scenes images and comments from the director, TV featurette, interview with Barry Forshaw, who did Nordic Noir, and everybody knows Barry Forshaw, tons of stuff. Uh, new English subtitle translation on this, new booklet with uh, brand new writing, and again, this sounds fantastic. This is a great, great movie. I'm so happy it's finally coming out, because yeah, I actually had to like, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to like VPN and watch this on like Netflix Sweden to watch it with English subs. That's the only way you could do it <laughs> back in the back when they were running it. So yeah, I'm so happy it's getting a disc release. This Crazy. is a really cool movie. Um, Adam says, "Man on the Roof is excellent." Uh, then you should love this too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brian says, "Feed is super disgusting." <laughs> Um, next one from them, which also sounded great, uh, December 16th in the UK and December 17th in North America on a blue is Yokohama BJ blues. And this movie sounds, I mean, it sounds like it has everything, but also sounds like everything I want in a movie when his police detective best friend is killed down at heel private eye and part-time blue singer BJ gets the blame. He must start his own investigation to clear his name, but what he uncovers is a tangled web involving crooked cops, drug dealing gangsters, the city's underground gay and biker scenes, and even his own past. A loose remake of The Long Goodbye that also draws from Visconti's Death in Venice. This was Matsuda's break with his action hero image. Samurai movie veteran uh, Eiichi Kudo re relishes his chance at directing a neo-noir that captures urban Japan at the height of 1980s decadence. Sounds perfect. Uh, we've got interview with the star, interview with the screenwriter, interview with the writer and Yokohama expert Toru Sano on the film and a look at the locations. Limited edition booklet with new writing by Dimitri Yanni on Toei Central Film and uh, some other stuff poured in there. there. There's just so much on these Radiance releases that I can't wait to see. Yeah, this looks like a cool one. I am excited about this. Uh, this whole month just looks great from them. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing announced from them for this month, uh, December 16th in the UK only, is Nothing is Sacred, Three Heresies by Boonwell. Um, yeah. First off, holy striking imagery on the front of this Batman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is going to be a hell of a set. The fact these are like new restorations is blowing my mind. Because at first I was like, oh, are they going to, it's just like the Criterions. I'm like, oh, no, it's not. Right. Yeah, this is, this is pretty amazing. Uh, we've got new 4K restorations on two of the films, including uh, Simon of the Desert and Viridiana. Uh, we've got a new restoration of the Exterminating Angel from a 4K scan by Radiance themselves. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got newly filmed uh, appreciations by Richard Iowade, Alex Cox, Guillermo del Toro, and Lulu <laughs> Wang. What? That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, the Life and Times of uh, Boonwell, which is a BBC Arena doc um, that played back in the 80s and 90s on BBC. This is going to be on Blu-ray for the first time ever. A doc directed, uh, it's called A Mexican Boonwell, doc directed by Emilio Mali uh, from 1995. That's almost an hour long. Uh, Boonwell, a surrealist filmmaker, a feature-length doc directed by Javier Espada on Blu-ray for the first time ever from 2021. Um, some other archival experts, uh, writing here and, and essays and tons of stuff. Like this is getting so much plus an 80 page booklet and this screams pre-order. I feel like this box is going to go very quick for them. Yeah. This looks absolutely insane. I can't wait. Uh, Sam who is here and typically not so welcome, Sam, uh, the Boone well set looks very up my street. I think one of the films was restored by radiance themselves. How many have they done in house? Not a ton. Mm -hmm. uh but yeah this is this is definitely going to be great yeah absolutely oh i know one of the films in the in the uh the monkey set they uh had to fix themselves because the french master was messed up uh so yeah it does happen thankfully they, they keep an eye on this stuff thank goodness um yeah that is radiance for uh december and just a heads up little update i've had a couple people ask about subs and all that stuff for radiance because they've allowed around this time of year people to uh come in and sub for the next year and they did say that they're going to be talking about that soon 
um, there is going to be an opportunity to be able to subscribe again. And um, yeah, they're, they're excited. They said lots of great stuff coming up for 2025. And I don't even like, how do they keep raising the bar? Radiance is, is intense. Whoever subscribed for their three-year packages, you made out like a bandit. <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, Makeflix, who I feel like I've not heard anything from in the longest of times. Uh, they are shipping this next week. This is coming on Mod Blu-ray, and this is Crow Haven Farm from 1970 with John Carradine and Hope Lang. Um, not one I've ever seen. Uh, this is going to include 12 minutes of classic TV commercials <laughs> featuring your favorite horror stars. Love that that's listed as special features there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this will um, be on a BD twenty five. Yeah, this is. The, I'm actually. I was really encouraged by the little trailer sample they put up on the site. Um, this is a really great one, and we've never had it, anything beyond like super, super low res bootleg VHS quality. Um, I'm surprised we're not playing up the folk horror thing because this is one hundred percent a folk horror movie. Uh, right. And I would think they would catch in on that, but whatever. Um, but don't. If you look at the on the specs, it says widescreen. That's actually not accurate. I kind of freaked when I saw that. But if you look at the sample, it actually is the original. One through three to one. Oh, um, okay. Thank God, because I, I was like, "Please don't crop it." Uh, but it looks like they did not, based on the clip they put up. So interesting. I hope not. Yeah, I don't think they did. Uh, one more from them. This is also shipping next week. Trivial from twenty twenty four, and uh, the first hundred orders orders of this get a little mini poster. Um, this is uh, also going to be mod. This is coming out on DVD as well. Uh, this is a brand new, like low budget horror film. Um, and then Kino announced Daytime Revolution coming on November 26th. This is crazy. I've, I've seen the clip for this, but I never knew it was a part of like this bigger story. Uh, this is for one extraordinary week beginning on February 14th, 1972. The revolution was televised. Daytime Revolution takes us back in time to the week that John Lennon and Yoko Ono descended upon a Philadelphia broadcasting studio to co-host the iconic Mike Douglas show. At the time, the most popular show on daytime TV with an audience of, this is still crazy, 40 million viewers a week. If anything got 40 million <laughs> viewers a week nowadays, it would be the most watched thing ever. Um, it says, what followed was five unforgettable episodes of TV with Lennon and Yoko Ono at the helm and Douglas bravely keeping the show on track. Acting as both producers and hosts, Lennon and Ono handpicked their guests, including controversial choices like Yippie founder Jerry Rubin and Black Panther chairman Bobby Seale, as well as political political activist Ralph Nader and comic truth teller George Carlin. Their version of daytime TV was a radical take on the traditional format, incorporating candid Q&A sessions with a transfixed audience, conversations about current issues like police violence and women's liberation. Uh, and on this, they're going to have some uncut musical performances. They're going to have a uh, handful on there and a trailer and a restoration demonstration. This is such a cool, random thing to get on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So glad this is happening. Uh, next up, Mountains of the Moon from 1990, getting a blue from Keto on November 26th. Uh, Adrian Martin does the commentary on this one. I believe, was it Imprint that did this previously? Yeah, yeah, it's been out. But yeah, beautiful movie. I mean, yeah, this is total eye candy film. This is a great one. Hopefully it looks pretty nice. I hope so. Yeah, but you can't screw up the transfer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, December 10th, VCI doing The Love Light from 1921, another Mary Pickford film. And thankfully, they've done very well with the, the Pickford stuff that they've done so far. Um, yeah. This was filmed in 1912 as a collaboration between friends, uh, Mary Pickford and Francis Marion. The silent gem was reconstructed from multiple sources by UCLA Film and TV Archive for the Mary Pickford Foundation and passed to VCI for final restoration work before it gets released. Should be good. Absolutely. Uh, Barfly mm, is the first yeah. one to announce as part of the next 88 films batch. Uh, this is from 1987, astounding film, uh, coming on November 25th in the UK only. Um, this one, this, does this have a US Blu ray yet? I, I know Imprint did it, not yet. Crazy, yeah. I wonder, I wonder what's holding that up here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think anybody could license it as far as I know, but you know, I mean, I mean, when you think of Canon films, this is obviously the movie you think of, right. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, well, uh, 
Well, I, I just saw that this might be a reason people aren't licensing it. I mean, they're, they're licensing from MGM, but uh, people who do people who do special features don't really love MGM. Yeah, we all know why. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> this is going to be fun because uh, 88 Films got rather horny this week. Uh, November 25th <laughs> in the UK, we're getting a Blu-ray as part of their brand new Roman porno line of Apartment Wife, Affair in the Afternoon from 1971. Uh, a lot of these are going to be uh, involved in the whole Nikatsu scene, and uh, they were uh, scandalizing the nation when it launched. And uh, yeah, some of these, I, I'm very, very surprised that we're getting a release. And I'm very excited about these because, uh, you know, Impulse did a ton of these on DVD back in the day, but like almost none of them got, uh, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but like almost none of them hit Blu-ray. There's only a tiny handful they did, and they kind of again just vanish so yeah i'm so glad they're pick sort of picking up where those left off and uh yeah i'm really glad there's more on the way because yeah these movies are just crazy entertaining <laughs> that's the first one then we get yep. woods are wet uh this is from 1973 also a part of the roman porno line uh and again these all are going to have special features i believe jasper sharp is on all mm -hmm. of this first round uh yep. not sure what else is going to be on there but 88 films is Kind of weird, like Shout Factory, where they announce the title, and then months later, they'll first off they'll announce a delay, and then second off they'll announce all the special features. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's Woods Are Wet. Next up, Knife Under the Throat from 1986, getting a release from 88 Films. Um, I, I thought this was hilarious. This is the cover that Instagram decided to blur and warn yeah. about for me. Uh, and it, it was like the least scandalous one. It was just that it was blood. Uh, go figure, I guess. But uh, yeah, this is a really this is like a sort of French take on the Jalo. This was out on Blu-ray from the Shack Film um, a while back with English subs. But uh, yeah, nice. It's getting a UK release. Yeah, this is a, a very sleazy, very trashy, very entertaining. Yeah, it's a good one. Featuring the one and only Brigitte Lahey. Yep. Uh, next up, November twenty fifth in the UK is I Am an Infomaniac from nineteen seventy one. This is the Max Picus film that we just got in the U.S. from Mondo Macabro. Uh, yep. So if you got that set, may not need this one, but uh, this will likely have different special features. So if you yeah. really love it, you might want to pick up both. Uh, then they are getting their Slasher Classics collection, having something added to it. November 25th, they get Mortuary from 1983. Um, this could be exciting because there was an MVD Rewind release of this recently, and it was fairly lackluster. Not much on there. I hope there's something on this to make this one special. Uh, I feel like this one gets forgotten a lot of the time. This is a uh, this is a pretty good movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun one, uh, and has a really interesting performance by Bill Paxton that nobody talks about. Let's leave it Look at who's here, Daniel Kramer. He says, "Hey there, Hi. fellers, about to record a new track on what I'll never tell Nathaniel. I already told you, so never." <laughs> 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 Thanks for the Sylvia mention. Yeah, we had to shout it out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Never spread. Um, next up 88 films 4k and blu-ray in the uk they're doing dragon fist from 1979 um they're gonna have a website exclusive version of this and i gotta admit the website exclusive hard box release i like it a lot worse than uh than this cover art i feel like kung fu bob has deserved his reputation this one looks quite a bit better to me no idea on the bonus features but this looks pretty great and this one needed a new scan because in that initial batch of Jackie Chan's, this was, oh my God, this one looked terrible. That was the only Worst one, but it, ooh, it was horrible. It was so DNR to death. It was unwatchable. So yeah, yeah thank God. Uh, then <laughs> the title I've gotten the most complaints about today, <laughs> Masters <laughs> of the Universe from 1987, coming on December 16th on Blue in the UK. Uh, again, uh, it's an MGM title over there. I, I don't know why there's no new master for this. This is probably going to be the exact same old HD master that's like 11 or 12 years old at this point. But the big thing for everybody that's complaining, this is the first Blu-ray release of this film in the UK ever. So it's deserved. It's deserved. But we still need UHD at some point. Of course. It'll happen. Oops. <laughs> Skipped over one uh, with oh, yeah. very visible nipples. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> I missed that the first time because it was obscured by the blue, but Instagram doesn't care. Hopefully YouTube doesn't. Uh, December 16th, <laughs> as part of the Italian collection, Story of a Cloistered Nun from 1973. Uh, we've got a release of this uh, previously, um, but that was not over in the UK. So glad we're getting a release of this. And uh, looks like it's going to be good stuff. Should have brand new extras. Steamy cover on this as well. Yeah. For, if you're a non-sportation fan, you haven't seen this one. Though. This is one of the sort of the classy ones. So uh, the cover might make you think it's a little sleazier than it is, but it's a good one. It's it's a beautiful film. Um, and beyond that, I, I I love that 88 Films has gone all in on the crazy uh, cover art this month, but it made oh, yeah. it very difficult to share everywhere, I will say. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, for those that are wondering, I see Brian asking in the chat who released this in the U.S. This is a part of that uh, non-sportation box set that Severn did. That uh, nasty habits box set. <laughs> uh, next one is Watcher in the Attic from 1976, coming as part of that Roman porno collection. Jasper Sharp will be a part of this one as well. Um, God, I love the poster on this too. This is a great one. Yeah, this hasn't been out since I think the old uh, DVD. Um, yeah, this one really is needed an upgrade. But yeah, this is fantastic. And this is also basically a horror movie as well. So yeah, this is a really spooky one. It's great. Interesting. All right, next one from 88 Films. Uh, Madame Cloud from 1977 coming on December 16th. Um, this is a Just Jaken title. Uh, Cult Epics released this one in the U.S. Oh, a year and a half ago, two years ago, something like, something that. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cult Epics doing great stuff. So is 88 Films. Too, ma too many good things. Speaking yeah. of too many. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, November 19th. Uh, I'm going to go get a beer. Can you excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe get three. Uh, Sony yeah. Pictures releasing the Frank Capra at Columbia collection. Now, this is where it gets interesting because this is a mix of 4K and Blu-ray titles. Uh, there are 20 films here. Nine of them are in 4K UHD, and they all have special features on them. They all are coming in their own box, as you can see here. Lots of discs coming in this set. Um, I, I'm very impressed that they're giving us bonus features that are brand new on many of these. Uh, it's not something that was totally expected. Now, the hard part, two of these that we're getting in 4K in this box um, were in the uh, Columbia Classics volume, I think it was one and three, something yeah, like so. that. Um, but those ones did not have any Dolby Vision. So, of course, they had to upgrade it in this box set to make you feel like you're getting something different. So now, uh, if you've got those other box sets, you'll, you'll probably still feel compelled. Um, this has so many titles. Uh, going through these quickly. So This Is Love from 1928. The Way of the Strong from 28. That Certain Thing from 28. Submarine from 28. Uh, the Younger Generation from 29. Flight from 29. Ladies of Leisure from 1930. Rain or Shine from 30, Dirigible from 31, The Miracle Woman from 31, Platinum Blonde from 31, American Madness from 32, The Bitter Tea of General Yen from 32, Forbidden from 32, Lady for a Day from 33, It Happened One Night from 34, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town 36, Lost Horizon from 37, so many Instagram posts. You can't take it with you from 38. <laughs> Mr. Smith goes to Washington from 39. Frank Campra, Mr. America, a brand new documentary from 2024. Um, it is 92 minutes long, so feature length. And uh, seems like a really great doc. Huge, massive box set. This is, this is crazy. Hit me with all of your feelings there, Nathaniel. Well, I think what shocked me was actually um, Submarine, I believe, is one of the UHD titles, uh, which I think that would make this the earliest American title to hit 4K, I believe. I can't think of one earlier than that. I mean, I know we've had like Dr. Caligari, you know, from Germany, but I can't think of any Hollywood movies that have hit UHD that were made before that one. So that's wild. Um, yeah. What really about uh, some of the the bonus films in that Columbia Classics Volume Five? Are any of those earlier? Because I, I don't think those were. I don't. Those, I don't think any of those were actual 4K though. I don't believe. The the bonus ones. There's a couple of them that are. Maybe, yeah, I have to go back and look. But I think as far as like a standalone release, so this is like they're going further back, so it's kind of encouraging. So I hope they 28. I keep doing that. Yeah, I can't think of one prior to that. It's pretty impressive, I gotta say. This is a yeah, this, is a, this is a wild set, and it kind of makes me even more like disappointed they, they wind up not putting out that UHD of uh, me, John Doe, um, right? Because like, god, the timing would have been perfect, so they kind of missed the boat on that one. It's too bad. 
Sibner says, this is the ultimate dad box set for the holidays. <laughs> uh, Adam is happy, says, uh, great box set. Chris is guessing $250 uh, USD. What, what are you thinking this is going to cost, Nathaniel? That's, well, yeah, I mean, if you look at what the Three Stooges set cost, that was only Blu-ray. I mean, that was in the 200s. So, yeah, probably about 250 That sounds about right. I, I Yeah. Uh, I was I was earlier thinking maybe 200 but then just the sheer number of discs in this and the fact that's that they're going individual cases, that's a lot of materials. It's probably going to be 225 250 somewhere around there. Yeah, like I said, just based on the Stooges is kind of where I'm thinking that's probably where it's going to wind up heading. Um, and, and, and I will say, beautiful looking box. Not not putting yeah. it down at all. Th this is this is something that I have to applaud Sony, who continuously is the one major studio that seems to put a lot of love and affection into not only just catalog titles, but like foundational studio starting major important titles from their past. Yeah, like why doesn't Warner Brothers do this for the Eastwood set? I mean, like right at that, like come on, it's a no brainer. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, there's so much that they that Warner Brothers specifically owns that they could have killed. Anyways, <laughs> straight from Fred <Frank> Capra <laughs> to Sweden porno blonde animal. <laughs> Did oh, you do man. this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> 88 films, uh, again, in the UK. Uh, this is coming as part of their Roman porno collection. This is a, a Japanese take on the Swedish sin phenomenon. Uh, this, uh, I, I will share, this cover art got me temporarily banned from Facebook for about 12 minutes earlier today. <laughs> I was going to say, have you ever had a week with more black boxes on the artwork? No, <laughs> no. This is the most by far. By far. Uh Sand Hamwich is here, says, wow, I've listened to so many Nathaniel Thompson commentaries. Nice to see his face. Hello. <laughs> I have one. <laughs> Couch is left of the transitions. I swear I did not plan it. Uh, next up is a deluxe edition of Sex and Zen coming on December 16th on Blu-ray in the UK. Uh, this is a big deal because this Cat 3 film is uncut and remastered for the very first time. The previous releases of this looked god awful uh very very hopeful that this looks pretty good yeah um and weirdly subdued cover art for what the movie is if you've seen compared it. to everything else we just saw <laughs> like, like how this do is you the go one, soft on sex this is the one they pulled back on like <laughs> oh man speaking of censorship let's look at virgin witch <laughs> which alone has four black boxes on it. <laughs> uh november 25th this is coming as part of their tygon collection uh this is from 1972 um again i, I may be the odd one out but I, I feel like this one's slightly boring and and again the cover makes it look way sleazier than the overall film is but uh good movie it has a huge fan base though because i mean we did this on dvd yeah. back in image when i worked on it that, this thing's so like crazy <laughs> i mean i I mean, I I don't know. I guess the title and all the like naked British women and stuff. That's all you need. But I mean, it's got to be it. <laughs> it never stopped selling the whole time we had it. I don't know, but um, I guess I love these Tygon releases. Eighty eight's doing though. These all look gorgeous. I mean, if you are on, on the fence with these, like every single one of them is like a massive, massive upgrade. Interesting. Yeah, disconnected uh, after dark. Yeah. <laughs> Mike says this film is not good. <laughs> this is uh, God. Who? Oh, look, I have it right here. I don't know how everything is always right within reach. Somebody uh, screenbound put this out in the UK just like two years ago or two and a half years ago. Huh. Interesting. I'm going to have to research that afterwards. I forgot that came out. Um, all right. Moving to our next one, which we're almost done already. Uh, Nine Queens back from 2000 coming as a Sony Pictures Classics release on October 15th. Um, I've never seen this movie, and oh, this cool poster one. is really odd. Um, that is a I, that is a terrible cover. I don't know yeah. what what Photoshop monstrosity they did to pull that off. Yeah, that is awful. But this is a really good movie. If you like sort of like uh, con artists, like you know, uh, kind of movies, this one's a really twisty, very David Mamet-y. Uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Um, just ignore the cover though. That's that's putrid. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Uh, next up, Sony Pictures Classic Secret Ballot on the same day. Have you seen this one too? I have not seen this one. 
That's too bad. Uh, this one says, award winner at five international film festivals. Uh, Secret Bout is a satirical comedy that humorously sheds light on the universal discrepancies of the voting process. We don't need that right now. Uh, and gender <laughs> differences. It's election day on a remote island off the coast of Iran, and a ballot box is parachuted to shore. An unnamed soldier is assigned to escort a female bureaucrat to gather votes. Together, they embark on a chaotic journey, turning the island upside down, desperately seeking anyone's vote there is more to the secret ballot than the two could ever imagine uh, i wonder if there's uh, any strategy to releasing that three weeks before voting do you think <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> i love right after that cover tb kane says graphic design is my passion <laughs> Good. can you do a new cover for nine queens while you're at it <laughs> please <laughs> please <laughs> Uh, all right, Las Vegas Hillbillies from 1966 is coming on Blu-ray from VCI on December 10th. Uh, this is, it's odd that they did it in this order, but this is the film that came before the one that they just recently put out. Uh, the, uh, what is the full title? Hillbillies in Haunted House. Hillbillies haunted haunted house. house, yeah. yeah. Hillbillies in Haunted House, which honestly looked way better than expected on Blu-ray. It looks stupidly uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping this one looks good. I've never seen this one. Uh, we got Jane Mansfield in this one. Have you seen this one too? I have, yeah. This is like for some reason this was like a very popular VHS back in the day. It was in like every video store. I don't know why that and own it house. Um, yeah, like Blockbuster videos talked heavy on these. I don't know why. Like movie gallery and Hollywood and all them, they all bought in on this. I who knows? Hmm. Interesting. But but yeah, it's a fun one. I mean, a lot of it's it's a musical comedy, you know, you know what you're getting. Of course. Jane Mansfield. Uh November twenty sixth, we are getting a four K and DVD release from Dark Arts Entertainment of the record holder for the least amount of money made in a theatrical run ever for <laughs> Zizek's Road or Zizek's Road, however you want to say that. Um, I grew up in Barstow, California, which is literally only about 45, 45 minutes to an hour away from this uh, fabled road in the middle of the desert. And uh, to see that this is getting a 4K release <laughs> is amazing. Um there are some extras coming on this. Uh, like if you look in IMDb, there's actually a documentary that's listed as uh, somebody producing it. So I'm sure that's going to be a part of this disc. For those that don't remember, Dark Arts Entertainment is a brand new label that is owned by John Penny and Brian Usna. And this film happened to be directed by John Penny. So uh, that's very obviously why this movie is getting a 4K release from this label. Um, I am... This movie is going to cost more on 4k than it made in its theatrical run literally so will this be the lowest selling uhd title of all time only time <laughs> will tell well no vci has put some out um i <laughs> uh, love you vci <laughs> uh yeah this this is interesting uh i've never seen this i'm, I'm actually curious to see it since i grew up so close to the road um I, i've gotten off of that exit many times uh never again been able to see this one though did you see this back in the day at all never seen it no one saw it no one saw it literally yeah uh it played in a texas theater and supposedly out of four tickets that were sold for it two were crew members from the film <laughs> uh last announcement for the week december 17th discotech is releasing digimon the movies this is the first three movies from digimon uh, on Blu-ray, and these are fixed from uh, dubs that were just awful previously, supposedly. All three movies uncut with a new dub with the original cast. Also includes the original English dubbed version from 2000, and uh, they've got no special features on here, even though they included the word features. It's a lie. <laughs> uh, so it's like special features, chapter stops. <laughs> Back in the DVD days, that's exactly yeah. what we would have seen. <laughs> that's what Disney did, yeah. Uh, all in right. case. <laughs> we always cover what is coming out next week after this, just in case you forgot. And it's a big week. Uh, we got Bringing Out the Dead 4K from Paramount Presents next week. Uh, the 2009 remake of Friday the 13th 4K from Arrow, which I think a lot of people have had that for the last like two weeks. Uh, for some reason, MVD always ships a lot of Arrow stuff super early. Chronicles of Riddick on 4K, Long Good Friday 4K, Doomsday 4K from Scream Factory, Torso 4K, including the site exclusive, which sold out on pre-order a while ago. Uh, and then we are getting Tomcat, the or sorry, Top Cat, the complete series from Warner Archive, which I'm excited to get. Uh, Film Noir, Dark Side of Cinema, number 21 uh, and 20, both coming out the same week. 
then we've got Madness coming from Rero next week. La Femme from Kino Lorber. Man of the Year from Shout Factory. Mother's in- Instinct coming out next week. The Great Escape 2, if you've ever wanted one of the most sought-after sequels of <laughs> Never. Uh, Model House from this year coming from Scream Factory as well. That is it, though. Uh, Nathaniel, which one of these are you most excited for? Oddly enough, I'm really psyched about bringing out the dead finally coming out. That that was like way overdue. Um, but that's yeah. extremely cool. Um, yeah, there's actually a lot of really good stuff here. Um, I have I have seen the UHD torso, and it's pretty spiffy from what I've gone through so far. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really good stuff. The the UHD of torso looks amazing. I I'm very excited for people to see that. Yeah. All right. That was a lot. That was more than uh, we normally have when Nathaniel's on the show. <laughs> so much smut. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had to censor so much. And today today was crazy. I Facebook, at one point, I put the one that I said that they pulled me down for, I don't remember the title now, they, they made it so I couldn't be in any Facebook groups. And I <laughs> administrate like six of them. I, I run the Scream Factory group, a boutique uh, Blu-ray selling group. I run my community group here in Kansas City. And they're like, you can't use groups. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, Thanks, okay. 88 Films. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, we are talking tonight surprising discs from 2024. Now, I feel bad because we uh we we normally have very specific topics when nathaniel's on very genre specific topics that i've loved every time and i kind of wanted to highlight mondo digital tonight because i feel like we haven't talked about it enough on these and one of the ways that i like reading mondo digital is all the random tidbits that we get in your reviews that are like oh, the old release had X and it will be just like a throwaway sentence in a random review that most people just don't know is written in here so they don't ever find this random great piece of information. And so I said, well, let's throw kind of a curveball and make it super subjective and uh, let's see what Nathaniel picks as surprising. So when you were thinking about this tonight, what what makes a surprising release in 2024? I would so my criteria was it was a release that sort of caught me off guard because it was either something that I thought would never get a physical disc release for various reasons, uh, or something that was just completely off my radar that just like just really kind of floored me. Um or just something that just seemed like just so out of left field for a company to put out, like just random. Mainly it was just things that I never thought would come out though. That was kind of the main thing. Like just I can't believe I actually had this on a disc. That was the main thing. I think four of mine are that exact same criteria. So I, I, I'm excited. Uh, Nathaniel picked out like 12. <laughs> so we're going to have a lot of honorable mentions to discuss. Yeah, it's actually it was 14 titles that I got down to. And you want me to do a top five? And I was like, oh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what is your first one? And we'll go back and forth. And then we'll list all those honorable mentions. Okay. So are we starting with like number five going up? Sure. Along? Yeah. Okay. All right. So my number five is Little Darlings which uh it came out from cinematograph um if you know the history of this film it seemed like that was n- yep it seemed like it was <laughs> it's n- my number five too <laughs> yep um it was tied up in music rights hell forever yeah. and it would show on cable uh oddly enough you know uncut um and then eventually it popped up on amazon but it was like it was just never gonna get a disc release it seemed like it just seemed like it was just hopeless um and thank god cinematograph just came out swinging with their their right with their first release um, they got it all cleared up. They got it put out. Music's in there. It looks great. It's on UHD. Really solid extras. Um, yeah. I, what can I say? It's essential. And I, it's it's a real dream release. I can't believe it's actually out. It's it's kind of surreal still thinking that it's out there. Yeah. I, I primarily picked it because, again, it's surprising because it's one of those titles that we were told for years, like, this will likely never come out. Um, yeah. People have used the word never many, many times for this one. And then to have it come out, and have it be affiliated with Vinegar Syndrome. It's not a very typical Vinegar Syndrome title, which is why it's on this brand new Cinematograph line. And it makes a lot of sense. It looks great. Um, the disc is good. I I wish the special features had a little more people from the cast involved. But other than that, um, the only thing I will say, I really don't love the uh, cover art on a lot of the Cinematograph so far. Yeah, um, uh, well, yeah, there's a few factors in there. There's whole, yeah. there's like, Art those artist likeness issues right. and the fact that also they were putting it together. The disc started getting put together during COVID, which also presented some issues. So given what they had to work with, it's 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 pretty darn solid. Like yeah, I'm, I'm really I, happy with it. 
I'm not putting it down. This this type of deluxe packaging on some some great picks so far. They they've had uh, for me at least three like amazing titles, and then the rest have been at least wow. These are very good. So yeah. at this point, they've been very very impressive so far. Um, we shared a number five, so you can go immediately to number four. Oh, easy enough. If we share number four, I'm going to be really shocked. Um, <laughs> my number four is uh, Intrepidos Punks from Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> I I almost put that one over here, but I'm glad I didn't. Uh, yeah, that and the sequel came out on Blu-ray, and this is one that I, I, a lot of people have been wanting, especially in LA. This one's kind of legendary because uh, they, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, this used to run like uh, as as a repertory screening title uh, once or twice. They showed it here, um, and it always brought the house down. But like just getting the rights sorted out and trying to figure out like how what, what like how how can you even get a complete version of it? It seemed like there were so many different cuts of it, but they actually managed to like assemble a true uncut version of it through all these sources yeah. um and yeah it just the fact that it just saw the light of day just makes me so happy because i never thought we would get a blu-ray of that thing it seems impossible but having both of those movies together in a set is just just mind-blowing to me that it actually happened because i've been wanting this for like 20 years so thank you <laughs> the amazing thing is they first announced this like four and a half or five years ago and then they just couldn't do it they were still wrestling with right things behind the yeah scenes. even then yeah they were just like eh. and i was like it's not gonna happen like there's it's there's no way you're gonna do this one there is, I as far as I can remember, at least two more titles that they've announced that were coming at some point, but they've been years, and I'm really hoping that they, we still get them. I doubt we're ever going to get Coonskin, but God, I hope we do. <laughs> God, I really hope we do. I don't know what the deal is with that one, but yeah, we need that one badly. Um, my number four is, again, another one where I am impressed and surprised that this company wanted to put... Not only this out on disc, but to put this much into this release. And that is because we got a, I believe it's a four disc release, and it does not say in the side, of course. Uh, yes, four discs of a 4K release of Goodbye Uncle Tom from Blue Eye. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't even know how to explain how surprising <laughs> this is because. <laughs> there are so many extras on this. Um, the fact that the movie looks better than it ever should have probably. Yeah. And it's 2024 and this is getting an impressive boutique release is nothing short of surprising. It, it is amazing that a company like blue underground, who a lot of people have critiqued for only putting out stuff that they've released previously would put so much new into a film like goodbye, uncle Tom. Now, the other thing, I was very surprised that it was so expensive. However, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And it, it is in a, an astonishing package. And if you don't have it yet, and I, I think it's still in print. Um, I think so. You probably should. This is this is something that is worth it and absolutely worth watching. And um, I don't know. It's, it's obviously a, an odd one. You, you got to get yourself in a mindset and understand what you're getting into, essentially. And the Italian version, the fact they got both cuts in 4K was was really yeah. surprising. But make sure you watch the Italian version because it it clarifies a lot about what they're trying to do with the movie. Yeah. Because when you watch the English language version, you're like, this is completely insane. Like, I don't even know how to process this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. Number three. All righty. Uh, my number three kind of gave it away earlier. Uh, it's because I put the review up today just in time. Is uh, Blonde on a Bum Trip from Distrib Picks. Um, if you know the Distrib Picks library it's sort of been stuck in home video hell for a very long time. We managed to get a few DVDs from them, mainly just the adult film stuff, but this was, they have this amazing exploitation library of stuff that is not hardcore. Um, that hasn't been around since the VHS days when they had a, a very brief window where they did stuff with something weird on VHS and they've been just locked it behind a gate ever since then. Uh, but this is one of the craziest ones. It has this just amazing, just banging soundtrack. It is just a wild drug exploitation movie. It's so great. Anybody who saw this on VHS, has never forgotten it, and uh, but thankfully, um, Vinegar Syndrome has them. Um, it's kind of like the strip picks is sort of like in between the Melusine line and Vinegar Syndrome. This one kind of like I'm not even sure where it slots in exactly because you can find it on both sites, so I don't know right. what you call it. Um, but it's not a porn movie, it's not even remotely close. It's it's it, but it's just amazing. And they did the packaging for this thing is just bonkers. The fact they went this all out on it is is just nuts to me. Um, but I, I cherish this release, and I'm so happy that it happened. I am, I, I mean. I, I'm so excited that something weird has continued to be such a prolific presence over these last couple of years. It's something that obviously with the person that was spearheading it, not being a part of things anymore could have quietly went in the background. And yet 
man, she has carried on a legacy and then some, and I, I'm so excited about that. Yeah, like what the stuff, I mean, we're getting like just dream titles every month from, from yeah. that catalog. It's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we got a question from Hilton. How excited are you that anything, if Russ Meyer is coming from Severin, uh, it's crazy. Can't even put it into words. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> I, can't. I just, I can't wait to find out what they have. Like, obviously they have Super Vixens, but do they have four titles? Do they have nine titles? Do they have one title? We don't know. It'll, it'll be a while before we find out, though. Um, my number three. Uh, there's a, a few reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised by this. Uh, this is an MBD Rewind release of Hardware Wars. Now, <laughs> it's surprising that a company went through the trouble of marketing this as a main release when Hardware Wars is literally 13 minutes long. Now, the bonus features, it makes the disc worth it. It is absolutely worth the pickup. It's a very, fairly cheap release. Um, but even then, like, it's a short that is worth putting out on Blu-ray that's worth owning. And if you like any of this stuff, like, I had this on VHS. I think I still have it on VHS here somewhere. Um, I, the fact that this is a brand new 2K restoration of hard <laughs> is mind-blowing to me. Never expected that to exist. Uh, they they put this together in one of the better MVD Rewind packages from this year. I feel like their quality has dipped a little bit. They put out uh, I, I'm not going to name any specific titles, but they put out a, a mess of a title earlier this year that is so AI upscaled garbage that uh, was just appalling. Um, MVD Rewind deserves uh <laughs> to be shaken for that one but uh yeah hardware wars th this release is worth it absolutely great um yeah I'm drawing a blank which title are you talking about i want to know now <laughs> uh it is uh i oh you know what i put it <laughs> i keep all my mvd stuff there and i put it in the closet because it was so bad <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember which title it was. Uh, I will. I will look up before you go, and I will let you know which one. Okay, I was gonna say because they they also put out uh, some of my favorite UHD releases of, uh, recently, which is uh, the two Ghoulies movies, which just look yeah stupidly great. Um, yeah, so who knows? Uh, let me see. I I will get it here soon. <laughs> what no, okay. is your number two? My number two. Um, so. I, one maybe one of the more surprising labels out there is uh, TerraVision. Uh, they manage to throw out some curveballs every month, especially if you're a subscriber because you never know what you're going to get. The big one for me that I didn't see coming, and I have to thank Bruce out there for this one because he actually like pinged me in, uh, right after Christmas and he in, right after New Year's actually because I just got back and he was like, "You have got to put this disc on right away as soon as it shows up on your doorstep." And I was like, "I don't, I've never even seen this movie. What are you talking about?" <laughs> um, and I'm counting it as this year because technically it was pressed and delivered at the very end of last year, but nobody really got it until this year, unless you happen to be living down the street from them. So I think it's this year. Technically, it shipped out at Christmas, but it's really a 2024 title, uh, and that is Hell's Highway. <sighs> um, wow, what a movie! Um, this is just a total joy <laughs> for every second. Um, this was not on my radar at all. And I, I just loved every second of this thing. I can't believe it's on Blu-ray uh, of all things with all these extra features. It is, this movie is nuts. Um, imagine sort of like Hitcher and like Highwood Hell and that stuff, but just thrown into a blender with like amazing miniatures and like goes into space and like plot twist yeah. galore. I mean, it is just a great, great disc. Um, I had a fantastic time with this. Um, completely just sideswiped me when I when I popped it in. I didn't know what I was in for, but um, nobody's really talking about this disc. But my God, please run out and get it if you can. I, I guarantee you will love this thing. It, it's just something else. Uh, after after starting producing some of the television stuff, I was paying attention more to what people are saying. Hell's Highway never gets brought up. <laughs> I know it it's, is <laughs> because no one puts it in. They look at the cover and they're like, "I'll get to it at some point." You're subscribing, right? Don't just please put it in, please. <laughs> it it is it is incredible. Look at that. Sam says Hell's Highway is my first television release. Absolutely love it. Phoebe Dollar's great in it. Absolutely, yeah. Hell's Highway is an SOV gem. Yeah, uh, amazing. Um, so <laughs> I found it. Uh, the MVD Rewind title is Hail Caesar, uh, released oh, December yeah, of last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks god awful. Yeah. Okay, um, so this next one, uh, I know <laughs> this is going to be a sour taste in some people's mouths because it was one of the dreaded replacement programs I mentioned earlier. Um, but I'm still amazed and surprised that we got this beautiful Blu-ray box set of Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe. Um, this is another one of those that we were told for years, the Coffin Joe stuff that you got from 
uh, Synapse and a couple other of the companies from, I don't know, like 11 years ago. That was the mm-hmm. last round of those that went out. Those are going to be all that you're going to have. And unfortunately, they were lost in a fire and all this. And then Arrow comes and releases something that makes all of them look so much better. Great special features. Um, massive amount of effort goes into this. And then a- an overwhelming list of content on every single one of these discs it's it's surprising to me for many reasons but just the fact that it's it's one of those we were told never never plan on it and here it is and we've got it and it's amazing i i've not watched all of them yet but the ones that i have they look better than anything that i've ever seen with coffin joe and i'm so glad that people have been able to discover him more yeah, that is a spectacular set. And yeah, the, the rumor that, that had gone on for a while was because uh, he, one of his last films was called Embodiment of Evil, which used a lot of clips. And they said, oh, well, they took the negatives and used it for the clips and they ran through and destroyed then, the film. Yep. So now you can't ever use them again and yada, yada, yada. So thank God that wasn't true. Um, yeah, they, they all just look gorgeous. All right, sir. Number one, most surprising of the year for you. All right. Uh, the one import title, the one movie that I can't believe is actually on disc and that I have my hands. And when I die, I want to be buried with this disc because I'm still in shock. And that is Hell's a Poppin from Germany. Nice. Yeah. Um, this movie is amazing. Um, it has only been out there in God awful quality bootlegs. I mean, just like dupes of dupes of dupes off TV. This movie is incredible. I mean, we mentioned uh, the Zazz films before, but this is like airplane on steroids. I mean, it's like yep. every minute of this movie is just jammed with gags. It's just a laugh a minute. It like absolutely messes with your mind in, in so many ways. This is like meta on top of meta. Um, it starts off with a musical number in hell and it just gets crazier from there. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a phenomenal film. But the German Blu-ray looks great. Uh, it has a really great making of on there and it will never come out in the US. Um, it is, it's stuck in legal hell because of the the theatrical production that it was based on um, and Jerry Lewis and this whole legal thing that it's involved in. And it just, it's not going to happen. So um, it's probably all we're ever going to get, but that's fine. It's a cheap disc. You can get it from Amazon Germany or whatever retailer you want uh, region free. Um, and yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I'm still just in absolute shock that, that movie's on Blu-ray. Uh, people sleep on a lot of the German retailers a lot, but funny enough, they are one of the, the the countries where the rights are a little less in limbo on many of these titles. There's stuff yeah. that's been released over there that will never come out in the U.S. other than this one. Um, places like Wicked Vision, places like Turbine, places like Play On. Um, but this one is from Anolis, who uh, uh, Eugenio works on a lot of their titles mm-hmm. as well. Um, they, it's less than Universal. I mean, the Universal logo is on it. They could do that i mean it's a legit release they gave them the mastery yeah um it, it's it's wild that they've been able to do as much as they could over there please pay attention to germany a lot of their stuff is region free and um a little like pro tip for a lot of people that don't know most of these german companies they put uh english subtitles on their films but they don't advertise it because they're not supposed to have english subtitles they yep. just do it quietly so check it out. Check out the Blu-ray.com forums if you really want to verify first. Um, it, it is worth seeking out many of these for sure. Especially a lot of their UHDs because there are some you might sleep on because it doesn't say it on the specs like <clears throat> right around the rain. Uh, <laughs> but they're on there. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Um, okay, so my, my number one, uh, this is probably less surprising as a release itself, but I am always impressed when like Radiance, can come on the, the scene, and their first three titles, everybody looks at them and goes, oh, they are here, they know what they're doing, this is going to be incredible. I was blown away and so very surprised by the first release from Celluloid Dreams. Oh, yeah. This UHD is one of the best-looking discs of the entire year, and not enough people talk about it. It is... It is a fun film. It is a wonderful movie. Obviously, you know, a lot of us have talked about this before. It's one of the better Jalos. But the 4K disc, (laughs) this is, it it cannot be explained how beautiful something like this. It it is genuinely surprising that it could look this good. I am just absolutely astonished by it. I I do have to throw in, uh, I I wanted to have a bonus because I've done so much with Terravision and I've done so much for this disc specifically. But I had to say, I feel the same way about Nail Gun Massacre. Um, this movie never should have looked this good. And this UHD, even though uh, the, the first reel of this, they, they filmed it rather blue. Um, but the rest of this movie is beautiful. Um, bonus features like crazy, but the 4K specifically, 
Nail Gun Massacre never should have been this lush, this textured. It is a gorgeous disc. Um, anyways, love Celluloid Dreams. I'm so excited for uh, Black Belly of the Tarantula, and they're working on another title to come out first before that. Nobody knows what it is yet, other than Howard S. Berger. If you're still watching, tell me what it is. Uh, and um, please, uh, please support Celluloid Dreams. Support good companies that are putting out titles that we were told would never come out. It's still amazing to me that we're getting some of these. Yeah, that that release just blew me away. I couldn't believe how good it was. And, the, and also the commentary is one of the best of the year. Great commentary. Absolutely. I cannot wait to see if it gets enough love in the Shelf Shock Rewind Awards next year because it deserves it. it. It is definitely up there for me. Yeah, it should. That's a great release. All right, sir. Let's uh, let's hear about these honorable mentions. Uh, all right. Let me just run through them. Just list them off real fast. No, spend some or, time. Exactly what right. you love. Okay. Uh, well, next up, um, I'm going to say... Uh, Severin, The Mummy and the Curse of the Jackals. Uh, how this got onto Blu-ray off the negative that they found at a freaking estate yard sale. What, like, what, everything about this release is just ridiculous. Um, if you watch the feature, I to explain how this happened. But I mean, this was a movie that was like treated like trash on VHS and just vanished after that. It's shot in Vegas. If you're a monster movie fan, this thing is amazing. Um, they have an old, uh, it's a great release. I just, I, I, again, I just, I'm just kind of floored that it's actually out there uh, and it just looks stupidly great. When they um, when they announced this, I went and found uh, it was it was a really poor quality version, but it was up on YouTube, and I saw like eight minutes of it and went, "Oh my god, this looks amazing! I have to get this." It is it is just wild. I mean, just to see like guys in like in in in, in Bond's Travis just shuffling down the Vegas Strip and like just people just being like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I can't recommend this disc enough. It is it is just total joy. It's so much fun. All right. All right. Uh, you want me to keep going, or do you want to do any of yours? Keep going. I right, uh, I did going, not then. grab any more. Okay. Um, just because it's a movie that I never thought we would even have, much less in a three disc edition in a freaking trunk, is uh, the Prime Evils from Full Moon. <laughs> <laughs> like how? <laughs> I don't know what else I can say. I mean, this is a movie that that never really got completed, and they not only right. finished it, but they've actually given you two cuts and just like just an insane amount of extras. I think one of the most just overboard packaging jobs i've ever seen in my entire life if you if you've seen what it looks like on the full moon it's site. huge it's, yeah and then yeah, umbrella it's... is doing a huge release of it and then for those i know there was a lot of people upset that the full moon thing was super limited they did just announce a standard version of the three disc yeah. version i'm saying version a lot now it sounds like not a real word um that's coming out in january of next year so if you want to wait you can get like a cut down version of just that and uh that's good for everybody so yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, um, I, I, back to Vinnie syndrome again. I think I have a couple more in here. Uh, the Mark and Erotic Passion, which is a double feature of uh, technically they're under the Melusine banner. I mean, they are technically hardcore, but they're not porn movies. They're these two right. really cool, stylish crime movies, uh, from Greece, one with the Gita Wilson, and they're both really fun. They're really good movies. They just happen to have because Greece is kind of like Brazil, they would occasionally just like throw sex into their movies just because right. that's what people wanted for some reason. I don't know why, but it's not very much. So if you're averse to that kind of thing, I would still say check these out because they're actually like really good thrillers. Um, they're very sort of like Jallo-esque sort of, and like sort of like French crime films and all that kind of stuff is kind of all smushed together. Um, but they're really, really good. I'm afraid people are going to kind of miss the boat on this one because they're going to think it's porn and they're really not. Um, but, it's, and, but the fact that they're like on Blu-ray from the negatives is just like, staggeringly insane i i hope they keep doing this kind of stuff because yeah that was just not one that i saw coming at all um and it's it's just a fantastic release i i am sort of disheartened by how many it seems like literally never go and check the mail scene site now that they're not yeah. on the same website they just are forgotten and sure quite often the adult titles took way longer to sell out than the regular titles however they didn't take as long as they're taking on mill scene right now. And it, it feels like there's many people that would have purchased them if they were on the vinegar center site, which doesn't make sense, but yeah. check it out. Yeah. But if you're not like a regular mill scene customer, like, please give this one a shot. Like I really can't recommend it enough. It's, it's yeah. a really cool double feature. Uh, next up back to Germany. Um, a Valerian, another movie that will probably never come out here because the music rights are absolute hell. Uh, Valerian Barak checks the streetwalker, AKA Lamarge uh, from play on in a, an insanely <laughs> stacked special edition um, with a director's cut, which I had never even seen before. I didn't know that what we had was a producer's cut. We actually get two different versions oh. of it and the packaging doesn't mention it, but it has English subtitles. Um, 
but this is kind of an outlier. It has Sylvia Cristel and Joe D'Alessandro. Um, it is a just gorgeous, like modern day kind of dreamy um, uh, Paris film drama that he did. Uh, but the soundtrack is just nuts. It's got like 10 CC and like uh, Elton John and like all this stuff. I mean, the soundtrack, this thing is nuts. Um, but it's only cleared in Europe, which is why it's never come out over here. Um, and probably never will unless Cinematograph wants to take a stab at it. But I can't imagine that happening. Right. Um, but it's such a cool movie. And the fact that we have this like deluxe edition of it just kind of blows my mind. Uh, Crazy. Yes, well, I agree. It does need a Blu-ray. Come on. I guess that's VCI's uh, court. That would happen. Probably. Someday. Yeah. Um, Reptilicus on UHD. <laughs> With with the the original cut too with the da- with the Danish cut, what else can I say? I don't know. Right, <laughs> it happened. Um, we live in a strange world. I, it I, is I, so odd. I thank you, vinegar syndrome. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to process that one that that actually happened. Um, great release though, just pretty really, impressive. Really great. Um, Death Squad from Mondo Macabro. Um, yes. Fantastically trashy, not so French crime film with like maybe the most shocking title card I've ever seen for a movie. Uh, it's, oh my God, this movie's so much fun. Uh, and the fact that you even did a limited UHD on it and it's out on Blu ray now, um, please get this one. It, it, it's very, very entertaining. A lot of people don't even know what this thing is, but it is just a total riot from start to finish. It's so much fun. One of the best for sure. Yeah, it is. It is really great. Um, Agfa pulling one out of the blue. This one is porn, flat out, but it's wild. Uh, Sex Demon. <laughs> Completely lost, utterly forgotten gay porn take on The Exorcist. Um, wow, I didn't know what I was in for with this one, but <laughs> you really, I, I, there's no way I could describe this on here without getting you banned, but um, they really did just do a remake of The Exorcist, but as a 70s gay porn movie, and it, it, yep. it is absolutely nuts. Uh, oh, uh, uh, The Streetwalker, La Marge. Uh, if you look up Lamarge on uh, Amazon.de, you'll find it. Or just type Sylvia Crystal Blu-ray. It'll be the first one that pops up. Or uh, Blu-ray.com. Change your icon at the top to the world right. and then type that in. And you'll... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, great release. Um, another label of mine that I that I really love. They're they're they don't they're not as prolific as I wish they were. But uh, Le Chat Fume, uh yeah. they put out some really great stuff lately. Uh, but the one that really threw me was uh, the Mad Heart or Le Corfu. Uh, if you love, uh, like Andre Zlowski, that kind of thing, this is right in that wheelhouse. It's got that kind of same kind of like just crazy kinetic camera style to it. Uh, it's just kind of like another one of those sort of tragic love stories out in the woods in France, but it is like one of the most visually stunning movies I've ever seen. Uh, and I never even thought it would hit Blu-ray. Um, I thought it was just a goner and somehow they managed to drag up the negative and it looks great. It's got English subs, uh, again, region free, fantastic release. Don't know if it'll ever come out here. It deserves to, but I don't know. I, I wish more of their titles got English subs. So too many of them don't have them, and it unfortunately knocks out a lot of people. Um, I will say, while I was visiting LA and got to see you, I stopped in CD Trader in Tarzana, and out of nowhere, I never imagined this would be happening, I found La Chat Quifume titles in a shop for sale on the shelves, and I was like, this is amazing! <laughs> I was like, it was heaven! So great! that um yeah it was great keep an eye out uh the 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 chat titles that i've been able to check out they put so much love and attention into their releases i again i wish more of them were english friendly but they do great work yeah but when yeah when they're english friendly though you can pretty much buy with confidence because i don't think they put out anything bad that i can think of um yeah their track record is pretty immaculate uh and last of all uh another group vineyard syndrome shout out is uh phase four the fact they actually reassembled the original cell bass director's cut what a release. Uh, it's out in 4K. Um, just absolutely stacked. Has all of these. Uh, it's, it's just great. Like, top to bottom. It, it kind of came out during a flurry of releases they were doing where they were like dumping out so many titles a month. This one really got lost in the shuffle. Nobody's really talking about it that much. But if you don't have it, please grab it. The movie is fantastic. And the UHD looks great. And just having like the original ending back in the movie itself, along with some extra footage uh, before that we didn't even know about before. Um, it's a real miracle release. And I don't know how they pulled it off. But thank God. Yeah. Phase four is just absolute 10 star release in every way. There's been a lot of people complaining about the vinegar syndrome slate from this year, th- feeling like it's a underwhelming year for them, but there are certain ones like phase You're four. Silicus, <laughs> the fact that they, I mean, a year ago, if you would have told me vinegar syndrome was going to do phase four, I would have definitely not agreed with that. I mean, they are, they're a label that you would not have expected to have a title like that, but there's there's so many random things that they've done this year that are just 
sure, maybe it wasn't the most strong month, but they put out this title, and that's very impressive. And um, the UHDs that they've done have looked stellar all year. Um, yeah, th there's a lot. Phase 4 is an incredible film. Yep. So, yeah, uh, a lot of surprises this year. I mean, and I'm sure, and I mean, we're only in September. I mean, like, I, I'm almost afraid to see what's going to happen by December. It, it's nuts. Yeah, Black Friday coming up. Speaking of that, uh, next week is the flash sale pre-order for their Black Friday sale already. And a lot of people don't even have the Severn Summer Sale shipment yet. So uh, <laughs> here we are. Uh, lots of complaints incoming on that. Um, Commentary-wise, uh, Nathaniel has stuff coming out literally every Tuesday. Make sure you're, you're following him if you like uh, the way Nathaniel works on some of these titles. Um, what's uh, In the last year or so, what's the title that's been released with you on the disc that you are intensely proud of being able to talk about that film well i mean obviously i mentioned bloodline uh that's gonna be coming out very shortly but that that was that was a real special one for me uh i'm really proud of the new track that i did with troy for opera for the seven one that came out um yeah. which i was kind of confused because for various reasons troy and i did separate tracks on the old scorpion release and but then we teamed up on this one so <laughs> <laughs> completely different track but it's a really good one <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, that, and there's a lot of new stuff in there. So even if you have the old ones, you need to get this one. Uh, but yeah, yeah, really happy with that one as well. Um, yeah, yeah, so we're, yeah. I know a lot of people are still waiting on that Severn stuff. Um, <laughs> and actually, I, I was really glad we got to do two of the uh, in the Argento's uh, deep cuts uh, set that came yeah. out. Yeah, that, that that's another surprising one. I had no idea that was going to be the four disc set when we did those. I knew they're doing the Door in the Dark series, but I didn't know that it was going to be that. Yeah. Um, when I saw the announcement, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, those were really fun to work on as well. Getting to do uh, two of the episodes of that. That was a really cool one. So um, hopefully some folks have gotten their copies. Again, that's another one nobody's really talking about all that much. But um, take a look because that thing is just absolutely just stacked beyond belief. Uh, as, as we close this, uh, maybe an abnormal plea for somebody that is into physical media like this. But I really want to say one thing, and that is a lot of people uh, and a lot of companies see a spike in sales when they first release something. The initial announcement, the pre-orders go crazy, it'll come out, and then it dies down. And people just don't go back and buy catalog titles all that often unless it's a sale. Mm -hmm. it, sure, some things I understand waiting for sales. We're all poor. It's 2024. I totally get that. However... There's a lot of places like uh, the, these smaller companies, like stuff that we mentioned tonight, like Mondo Macabro. There's a lot of older catalog titles that, sure, not a lot of people are talking about Hunting Ground that they put out a couple of years ago right now. All the limited red cases are sold out. Not very many people are buying the Blu-ray. Those movies are still great. Go check out catalog titles. I know that these brand new ones are exciting. And as hypocritical as this sounds, on a night when we talked about amazing, surprising titles from this year, Check out some older titles. There's still some amazing films in print. And uh, before you lose your chance to get them, it, it's a great time to pick them up and support those companies. I mean, those films still need to make money and they, they need to be able to sustain. And um, if it's something that you're into, always, always support the company because they, they do great work. And I would say if you need more of a kick in the butt, just remember, go to eBay and look at what Mono Macabro DVDs are selling for. <laughs> and that money doesn't go to them. So buy the stuff now. <laughs> like. <laughs> and Mono Macabre has been killing it this year. I mean, they, yeah. it's every month they've really been blowing it out of the water. I mean, with some really wild stuff. And we still got Cafe Flesh 4K coming. Thank God. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Nathaniel, thank you so much for taking the time out on a Thursday night. I know you're a busy man and this is rare. So I appreciate you being able to do this. Always a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, everybody else, come back next week. We're going to have the boys from the Almost Major podcast back and uh, we're going to be doing something fun next week. But. On that note, thanks for everything you do, Nathaniel. Thanks for everybody uh, for being here. And it's uh, it feels like a short night, but I feel like we covered a lot of stuff tonight. So We sure did. Yeah, thank you again. And I, I hope next week has a lot fewer black boxes for you. I don't want you to keep getting in trouble. <laughs> well, <laughs> Criterion announces in a couple of days. We'll see how much they make me <laughs> censor. <laughs> Emmanuel, back week. that. <laughs> oh, gosh, another one. Uh, have a good week. We'll see everybody next Thursday. Thank you for listening. To hear more shows from the Someone's Favorite Productions Podcast Network, please select the link in the description 